Live. Okay, what's up, people? What's up, chat? How y'all doing? Chill town, what's up? In the building, yo. In the building. Coming down the uh, coming down the home stretch, man. Coming down the yeah. home stretch. Yeah, well, you know, good uh good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, depending on where you are. You know we're uh you know we're uh, worldwide. Mm -hmm. So we're everywhere. Chill, you tap you tapping any games. Oh, you know what? First actually, let me say, you know, uh RP, rest in peace to Willis Reed, the late well, great. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't really know a lot about Willis Reed, right? And they just know about him passing away and him being on that Nick team that won the NBA championship. But you know, Willis Reed was a baller, you know, played at a predominantly black school, right? With the Grambling. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> with the Gram. So not only that, you know, Willis was the he was one of the few Ironmen in the league when he first came into the league. I mean, his first seven years, he, he played he played 10 years. Seven of his 10 years, I think he averaged something like 79 games a year on mm. like 37 minutes a game. I mean if we could get a guy to play that many minutes a game today, you asking for a lot, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. you are asking for a lot. I mean, he was a glass cleaner. I mean, that during that seven year stretch, yeah, it's fourteen boards. And Willis wasn't Willis wasn't one of those like the big the consummate big guy. I mean, he was a big guy at mm -hmm. six eight six nine, but he wasn't Chamberlain big, right? He wasn't yeah. Russell. He wasn't Russell. But he wasn't like that. But yeah. he was a big guy, and he was buckets too. And, and the guy that I think about when I think about Willis Reed is I think about a guy like Andre Drummond. Like if you think about Andre Drummond and like Andre Drummond early in his career, his ability to clean glass. Imagine Andre Drummond; he could score at a high rate. Yeah. If he could, if he could score at a high rate and he could defend, that's basically Willis Reed. A glass cleaner, fourteen boards a game. He was twenty and fourteen for I think six or seven years, right? And, and, and no question about it, his staple was when they played when they played in the NBA championship in 1969 right. 70 and that was one of the best playoff runs in NBA history you know we talk about you know Olajuwon going through what he went through in 95 we talk about Dirk's run in 2011 uh we talk about a bunch of different runs nobody really talks about that run with Willis Reed in yeah. the 69 70 let's, season let's, let's, let's elaborate on that you know, let's, let's so, talk about that a so so he went through Willis so he went through West Unseld in the 69 70 season this is the league MVP by the way he went right. through him he went almost 20 and 20 against him he went 22 right. and second with 22 and 18 against him how many and games was that series that was a that series, game? I, I think I think that series was five, five games five, yeah five, I, think, okay. I think that series was five games he went through, this is the league MVP he went through him but then it gets better so the next series he's got to go through Jabal now, Jabal's only a rookie but Jabbar mm. is like 34 and 18 showing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th 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 This is Jabbar showing up right out of college, just destroying everybody. He has to go through him. He goes 28 and 12 against him, right? This is this is a guy who's awesome in Milwaukee, right? Mm -hmm. So to get through, so to get through West Unsell, which is the league MVP, and Jabbar, that's saying a lot. But that's not the end of it because now we got to get to the NBA. Now we get to the NBA finals. And who's there waiting for him? Chamberlain. Yeah. And Chamberlain is waiting for him. So before he gets hurt in game five, up until game five, he's 30 and 15. So he basically doing the same thing that Matt, that Jabal was doing when he had magic in 1980 when they played against Philly. He basically was dominating the series until he tore his quad, he, he, he tore his adductor muscle. Now, for those mm -hmm. that don't know, Big Ox, your adductor muscle, that's the muscle in your leg that enables you to lift up your leg so you can walk. So that's a season ending injury today. Right. If you if that happens today, you out for the season. At Willis least the season. Willis comes out in Game Seven and plays with this injury. You can't get you can't get a guy you can't get a guy to play with a sprained ankle today. Let alone <laughs> a, uh, let alone a ripped adductor muscle. Right. He also coached in the NBA for a lot of years. He yeah. was an ambassador. Willis was one of the Willis Reed was one of the he was one of the consummate pros and. The fact of having him around for as long as we had him around, he was awesome, man. And yeah. and, and and he was definitely his loss was definitely going to be felt. You know, he was he was he was a big time commodity for the NBA. Yeah. He was awesome, no yeah, doubt. Rest, rest in peace, with us, Reed. Yes, sir. Yeah. I know just right there, y'all in the chat. You know, make sure y'all pay your entrance fee, man. Go ahead and make sure you like this, Mike, like this video because yeah. I guarantee you just learned something right there about Willis Reed. Speaking mm -hmm. of learning something, that's what we are here to do on Chill with Chill. Y'all come through, soak up some game, learn some NBA knowledge, present and past, and mm -hmm. even future, you know? Mm -hmm. So once again, like always, just let y'all know, 
Y'all run the show. You know what I'm saying? Send them super chats through. We'll answer any questions. We'll get the link out. We'll chop it up. Um, and But in the meantime, let's, let's go over this. Start chilling. The other news, John Moran. Yeah. So with everything that happened this last week, week before, mm-hmm. you know, just this whole time with the, the John Morant saga, yeah, he's back. Yeah. What does this mean for the Grizzlies? Because what did they do? They went six and two without him or five and three? What? Six and one. Six and oh, six and one. Mm-hmm. Six and one. So what? So what, what is what does this mean for the Grizzlies? Well, the plus side to it is getting him back makes them a better crew, right? So you can't just take twenty seven and eight out the lineup and not feel that and they did feel it but they had to switch up a lot of what they were doing right Tyus I think Tyus Jones might be the best he one of the best backup lead guards in the game mm-hmm. no, no doubt about that he he keeps them focused he keeps them poised he takes care of the basketball really well when they playing in transition he gets them sped up he can knock down open shots and he basically plays like a lead guard who is on the second unit but yeah. now and Ja sees that and with them winning, what that does for Ja is that lets Ja know that I, right, when I come back, I got to integrate myself back into this unit. I can't just come back onto this unit all boisterous because they were rolling without me. And because mm-hmm. they were rolling without me, me getting back onto this unit and coming back boisterous and trying to just basically be Ja again, well, that might screw up the fabric of what's going on right now. Don't get me wrong. We do need him. But in the process of that, I don't want to screw up what we got going on. Now, the distraction of what's going on off the floor, I think that them putting their arms around him, I think that that helped a lot. And I think that's going to help his game more than anything. I think that's going to help his game. And I think that's going to help get him integrated back back onto the crew. Now, I will tell you this, Ox. I think that him coming back this soon, I still it doesn't sit well with me. And yeah. the reason why it doesn't sit well with me is because he doesn't really look contrite. What I mean when I say that is he doesn't look like I I got it back together. Maybe he does need some time away. And two weeks might not be enough. Right, right. I, I'm not sure that two weeks is enough. I wasn't feeling getting him right back on the crew, especially since what they were doing. Yeah. Like if they were if, if even if they weren't rolling, I, I'm thinking about his mental health. And how he handles scrutiny, and the fact that now with all of this happening, him getting back on the crew this early, it's gonna come full force now because the playoffs is about to start. So it's about to be something even serious, even more serious now than what it was before. And is he gonna be able to handle it? That's the million dollar question. Yeah. And is it gonna? And what is it gonna do for the dynamic of our crew? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a that's a good question. Definitely got to see. I don't, and I don't think we'll see. Right now, I think that's something that we're gonna we're gonna have to learn about next season, the season yeah. after. What is this? How does this affect job uh, his mental? I did mm-hmm. see um, an article, and I, I'm not sure about the source. I actually didn't see, but it said that John Moran said that he went to the the counseling facility not because he has a drinking problem, but just to help him cope with the stress, the mental yeah. everyday life of being an NBA star. Right. So I mean, <clears throat> I hope I hope there's you know truth to that, and I hope that. Wherever he went, helped. You know, I hope he learns right. to find different stress relievers, mm-hmm. um, better coping mechanisms and whatnot. Because yeah. you know that's that's an issue. We we don't we don't want to try to drink the pain away, you know, or, or drink the stress away, if you will. Yeah. And um, on top of that, and on top of that, Ox, to have yourself in some sort of facility or mm-hmm. to deal with the stress like that, mm-hmm. I don't think that that's a short term thing. I think that that's right. something that yo, I might need some time away. Yeah. To make sure that I got it together. So when I come back, again, whatever I got going on, I don't want to screw this thing up. I, and I, 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 I'm I, not sure that I'm, I'm not loving him getting back in this lineup as, yeah. as quickly as he did. I don't love it. That's a fact. Well, you know, speaking of the Grizzlies mm-hmm. and how they went six and two without job, they're getting their star player job back. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that leads me to this. They got the two seed now. The Kings got the three seed. We're mm-hmm. stuck in three. Actually, they're one of the game ahead, ahead one of the, one and a half games ahead of mm-hmm. us now. We just dropped two back to back. Did you did you tap in last night? You watched the Kings. I uh, did. Celtics game? <clears throat> I did watch the Kings Celtics game last night. I mean, it, it was to say the least. It was a really good game. I think where the game turned, it turned in the third quarter. Yeah. That's where that that's where it got tricky because. Coming off that East Coast road trip, 
the way that the, the way that the Kings play, the Kings got a fast paced game. They shoot the long ball, right? DeMontis in the mid range, right? DeMontis cleaning glass. Uh, Keegan Murray was playing really good. Hey, but mm-hmm. hey, Big Ox, I'm loving this kid, Trey Lyles, that y'all got, yo. Yeah, I, the, more I, the, more I, the more I watch him, the more I'm thinking, yo, we need this dude because he's got a he, he's got a smooth slash dirty work way about him. And I dig that about his game, right? Harrison yeah. Barnes, who's also another pro. Like, you, you I don't, I, I, I can't stress this enough. When you're talking about championship level teams, you need pros, yo. And they, they call them vets today, but they're yeah. pros. And that's what Harrison Barnes is. He's a yes. pro. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. With, with, that, with that being said, last night I'm watching this team against the Celtics, and you guys do a lot of stuff that the Celtics do in terms of offense. Mm-hmm. But it looks like you got wrapped up in how the Celtics play and try to beat them at their game instead of playing the way you guys play. Because the Celtics yes. shoot the long ball a lot, right? Mm-hmm. So with the Celtics shooting the long ball a lot, you guys got wrapped up in that. Now you didn't get any. You didn't get a lot of stuff going to the. Go into the go into the basket, mm-hmm. right? You didn't get a lot of stuff in the mid range. You got wrapped up in the shooting the long ball with these guys, and that's basically their game, which shot you guys out of the game. So in the third quarter, you know, giving up forty. Now, when you run up on a team like the Boston Celtics, who they do play defense, yeah. the, Celtics, the, the Kings play D, but they don't play defense to the level of the Boston Celtics. So when you run up on a crew where you scoring a lot and they score a lot, also. Now what happens is the separator is defense. Like, can we slow these dudes down? And that's yeah. what happened last night. Yeah, that was that was a crazy. And honestly, I, I said it. I said it yesterday uh, a couple of times. I said it before. The Celtics are a team that we just don't. We don't want to play the Celtics right now. We're not. Yeah. We're not. We're not at that tier yet. I, I, we yeah. definitely. And that's the thing. So people say about the about the Kings, like, oh, you guys are this, but you're gonna be a first round or whatever. You know, thing is, we're just we're just turning around. We're not we're not that championship team yet. So teams like the Celtics who are a championship contender, they we just they got some for us that we, we don't got that gear yet. But I, right. I believe I believe we're working towards it. You know, when uh this this offseason for Keegan Murray is gonna be huge for our future. Yeah. We'll see we'll see what happens. Um let me see. Matter of fact, let's not we'll knock a couple of these super chats out real quick before we just get into the show all the way. No doubt. Um Rella tapped in and said, I'm back, OG. Austin Rivers is here and hooping. Yeah, he is. Yes, he is. And not only not only is Austin Reeves hooping, he needs his money. He made that clear that his contract is up and yeah. my price tag is high. He's looking at he's looking at like 10 he asked his asking price is like 10 to 12 million. He ain't playing around. And rightfully so. Get that rightfully money. So. If, if you look at the Lakers squad, he's probably they starting two guard. Mm-hmm. If you look at the Lakers squad, so yeah, I need yeah. my money. No doubt. Yeah. So yeah, get that starting two guard money. You earned it. Yeah, I, I need my bread. Definitely earned it. I, I really like Austin. Uh, you know what? I'm going to ask you anyway. You know, forget it. We just, we just only got one super chat out the way. We'll get back to him. I want to know yep. something, Chair. Yep. I asked. Uh, I was I, I was hosting earlier today, um, so I got to ask more questions instead of instead of being a panelist on Players' Choice. I asked some of the fellas. LeBron doesn't make the playoffs this year. Doesn't make the play in. Let's let's say let's say not let's say gets knocked not gets knocked out of the play in. Let's say he just misses the whole play in. Mm-hmm. Is it time for Brian to consider hanging up his boots? Is I it- don't. I do, what I don't know. What I don't understand is I don't understand why people are still wrapped up in James like he was five years ago. Yeah. James does what he does. Yo, he averages thirty. He's average. He's doing this in stretches. He can't do this for an entire season. And the reason why he can't do this for an entire season is because he's older now and he's got a lot of miles on him. And his body is breaking down more today, more last year, more the year before that, than it was five years ago. So right. now with all of these all of these miles on him, him breaking down, the Lakers, they break down because they depend on him so much. I think he still has the goods in order in, in terms of him still being able to play. I felt like I think it was last year that I said I thought that he had I thought that last year was his last elite season where he was like a top three player. And then mm-hmm. after that, he would still be a top 10 player. But the James who's throwing teams on his back and taking him to the NBA championship, those yeah. days was over. I felt like that last year. Yeah. And it looks like that's what's going on. I'm not sure if if 
if the idea is for him to still be the man, then that's not going to work because those right. days are over because well, he's not going to hold up Yeah, because he, he's not going to hold up. Physically, he can't do it like he used to be able to do. He can still do it for stretches, but that's not going to be enough, Big Ox, because you look yeah. at teams like the Boston Celtics. You look at teams like Philadelphia. You look at teams like Milwaukee and Giannis and Joker and teams like that where their guys are holding up. Now, yeah. I can appreciate the logic that, you know, can you can we get 55, 60 games out of you and once the playoffs start, let's see what happens. Well, we tried that with the Clippers. What happened last night with Paul George? Paul George might be out for the rest of the season. Right, I'm, I'm hoping it's a hyperextension just out for three. I, you know, three I, or four. I, I, I really hope that it's nothing. I hope there's nothing torn. I hope there's no structural damage. But this is the logic mm -hmm. when you can't hold up, that's the difference in winning and losing. Exactly. James is at that point in his career where he should we shouldn't have to rely on him as much as we do. And the reason right. why people still look at him like that, big ox, is because what he's doing, what they're not looking at is they're not looking at the fact that he's only doing this in stretches. He'll do it for us. He'll do it for a period of time. Then he'll break down. Then he'll come back. Then he'll do it again for a period of time. Then he'll break down again because he's getting older and his body is breaking down. So I'm not going to say that he should retire, but I think we got to come off the idea that James is the guy that's going to lead your team to an NBA championship. The chat, the chat, just to just to speak on uh, Paul George, the chat is saying that ESPN reported it would be two to three weeks. It was a knee sprain. Okay, good. Uh, that's, that's that's good news. news. That's good that's news. Good we news were right yeah, we were definitely praying for Paul George. Yeah, but, that's uh, good news right there. Good I, news. I hate to see that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Chill. Would you ever consider going on PC Gridiron? I would love to see you talk about football. That's I from Jamar Trusty. I talk football a little bit, but like yeah. them dudes over there, I mean that that's that's their thing. And, yeah. and I talk football, but I'm not a football guy. Like I can talk football. Like me and Ox, we basketball people. Mm -hmm. Like I, I mostly talk basketball. I can have a football conversation, but if I was to go over there and talk football, I don't think I would do it for long because again. Those guys are football guys, so I don't think that I could. I, I know when I'm in over my head. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of those guys over there on uh, PC Gridiron, y'all make sure y'all tap in tonight. Tonight is the hundredth episode, so that's a great that's a great milestone for those guys. We proud of y'all. That's a good um, show. It yeah. Jay, asked me uh, a while ago if I ever wanted to jump in, but man, I'm a super football casual. I, I'm my, it's my <laughs> you know my knowledge is extremely limited. I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a little, I'm, I'm, I'm a little above a casual. Like I know yeah. the game, but I'm not a, I'm not, uh, I don't know, Keyshawn Johnson or um, Ryan Clark. I'm not those dudes. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even even when I was playing football, even like Pop Warner High School, I just was like the plays were over my head. I was just, I'm playing the end. I'm only thinking about sacking the quarterback. <laughs> so, was, so you know, I was, I was missing assignments. Man, yeah, football was not my thing. I could catch anything though, anything tight end, wide receiver. I'm anything you throw to me, I'm gonna catch it. Funny story, I'm big ox. Funny, uh -huh. funny, funny story, big ox. I played my freshman year of high school. I played DN, and yeah. I was leading the team in sacks. My mother came to one game, and I got hurt. She made uh, me quit on the spot. Oh uh, man! Right there at the game. Man. I don't want you playing this football no more. It's too rough. She made me quit yeah. on the spot. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Football, Mom, football was, was yeah, football was fun though. So I, I yeah. only played like freshman, sophomore. Mm -hmm. Um by the time I got to junior year, my coach, he wasn't letting us play anymore. My basketball yeah. coach, he wasn't letting us play football. Yeah. But I wasn't I wasn't good enough, you know, to complain about it. I was just like, mm -hmm. cool, I don't care. <laughs> you know, it was fun though. Yeah, it uh, was. Let's see. I oh, know we already just did that one. Let me get by that. Mm -hmm. Um from Cam Johnson. Um, this, this might be Cam Johnson from the from the Nets. Might be. <laughs> Is Patrick Beverly for a point guard a top three defender of all time? And isn't Isaiah Thomas a better defender? Like Bev has NBA defense teams, but uh, yeah, that's true too. But when you talk about being a being a a top thirty defender all time, I mean that that that's putting a lot on it as a as a as a point guard. I mean he's a disruptor. Don't get me wrong, but I think your stance is the fact that he made the all league defensive team. And I think Pat Bev made the all league defensive team, what, like, like twice or something like that? So with him making, with, with him being an all league defender, he was elite at one point. But mm -hmm. to be top 30 all time, I mean, I think it takes a little bit more than that. I'm not sure that Pat Beverly is a top 30 
defensive defensive player, all top thirty defender at the point guard spot all time. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. So when I think about when I think about point guards, let's see. I mean, I, I don't know if I can name thirty of them, but like Drew Holiday, uh, Jason Kidd, Chris Paul, John Stockton, uh, Walt Frazier, um, just, just just point guards that were Gary Payton, point guards that were locked down point guards, um, Sidney Moncrief. Let's see here. I would have. I, I would. This is just off the top of my domes, like Sydney Sydney Moncrief. Um, let's see. Isaiah Thomas was a was a, was a, he wasn't he wasn't an all league defender, but Isaiah Thomas was a defender. He he could defend. Um, Fat Lever was a, was was a defender. Um, like I said, Jason Kidd, Rondo. Uh, who am I thinking about in this era of of point guards? I would have to I, I would have to I would have to look into that. But to say top thirty, I think that that's a number that you. I think that's a number that you're bringing up to to support your narrative. Yeah. I I I, I do think that. Uh, let me see. Uh Andrew G tapped in. <clears throat> With all I say about Tatum, I think he a slim chance of being in top five small forward all time. Cause I see what he is becoming. But Brown is him too. Consistency matters. Well you got to remember too that I'm glad you brought up consistency because Jason Tatum has been the only consistent guy in that lineup the entire season. None of those guys. So Marcus Smart in and out the lineup, Robert Williams in and out the lineup, Malcolm Brogdon in and out the lineup, uh, Hoffitt in and out the lineup, Jalen Brown also in and out the lineup. Jason Tatum has been the only consistent guy in the lineup. Now I think Jason Tatum falls in love with the long ball. And I think that's largely due to how the Boston Celtics play. The Boston Celtics, I think that they, I think they're fifth. They're in the top five. They're in the top seven. I'm, I'm sure that they're in the top seven in the league in three point attempts. So their game, their game is shoot. Their game is at the long ball line. I mean, Grant Williams averages five threes a game. Grant Williams. So that's where their game is. And Jason Tatum's game is at the long ball line or it's at the rim. Once he gets that in between, and this, these are the growing pains of becoming a great player. And remember, we're in year six. You guys expect when a guy is great, right? When a guy has done something great, you guys expect that level to be this, this, this. Like what you saw last year from Jason Tatum, that's probably who he is. That's probably who he is. Now, I don't mean in the playoffs. I mean, what you saw from him in a regular season, those numbers, that's probably who he is. And you're going to get some better seasons. But ultimately, what you saw from him, that's probably who he is. Now, these are the growing pains of becoming great. Now, does that mean that he's not going to get better? I think he is going to get better, but in terms of consistency, he's been the only consistent guy in that lineup. Just off the off the off the strength of him being there. So, I've I've been one of the guys that said prior to. You know, prior to this point in the season, I, I'm a big Jalen Jalen uh, Jalen Brown guy, so yep. I, I have said that I do think Jalen Brown might be, I might give him the edge over Jason Tatum. I, mm -hmm. I think I might have to walk that back, but Jason Jalen Brown is definitely in that realm. They're right there. My only thing with him is that I think Jalen Brown got a little bit more dog in him than, than Jason Tatum. Where I've, I've seen I've, I've seen Jason Tatum in the playoffs and in different situations. Kind of look like a deer in headlights. Kind of look yeah. uh, a little scared, you know. To, to I, I don't I don't want to throw that scared word around, but I've seen him get shook a couple times. Where maybe maybe against Jimmy Butler or just certain situations where it's like you're too good to stop shooting. You're too yeah. good to to be standing over there moving the ball quick. Like I don't want it, you know. Like there is an unsure way of there is an unsure body language about him. I watched him in the finals last year where. He would get the ball and get right off it. And I'm thinking to myself, in fact, I'm yelling at the screen going, yo, my man, we're not going to stop coming to you. You're our right. guy. So we're not right. going to stop coming to you. So however you're feeling about wanting to get off the pill, yo, get over that right now because we're not going to stop coming to you, right? Yeah. So I think that these are the growing pains of him becoming that guy. Now, don't get me wrong. The whole the, – the, the logic of him having that dog in him, there are certain – I've always felt like this, Ox. 
you either got that dog in you or you don't. It's right. just a matter of somebody or you bringing it out of you, right? So Scotty Pippen always had that dog in him. It was mm -hmm. Jay to bring it out of him. Yeah. That's all it was. It wasn't that he didn't have it in him. Jay just brought it out of him. Gasol always had that dog in him. Kobe mm -hmm. brought it out of him. So it's just a matter of getting a guy to bring that, not just getting a guy to bring that out of you, but you mm -hmm. also bringing that out of you too. So I don't think that, I, I think we're talking about a guy who's just going through growing pains of becoming. Yeah. That's yeah. what I think. And in, in, in that first, with that being said too, it's those first uh, maybe two seasons, I, I was actually calling him soft. Come to find out, it wasn't soft. He just wasn't as strong yet. He just had That's to get, get a little bit, get a little stronger. So I, I definitely all. take that back, and I wish I wouldn't have said that. But I do have to ask you this, though, Chip. Yeah. You said you said Gasol didn't have Gasol had the dog in him, but Kobe mm -hmm. brought it out. Did Kobe bring it out, or did Kevin Garnett bring it out? I think it's a combination of the two. So if you watch the NBA Finals in 08, he was obviously not prepared for that. Yeah. And I don't mean he wasn't – because he, he had played against Garnett plenty of times during the regular season. And right. he had he had held his own. But as you know, the playoffs is something completely different. Right. So when he gets in that atmosphere in Boston, and we all know, you know, when you're running with a bunch of dogs, kind of stick your chest out a little bit more. Yeah, Talk sure. a little bit louder, right? Walk yeah. a little bit taller. So that's kind of who Garnett was at that time, right? He wasn't that dude who was walking like that when he was in Minnesota. So – Pal Gasol gets, gets, goes up against him, and he's running up against a guy who is a little bit more confident in who he is and who he's running with. That doesn't mean that he wasn't confident in who he was running with. He just wasn't prepared for that. And Kobe yeah. was the one who had to get that, who had to instill that in him, that not just I'm going to punch you in your face, but, yo, this guy can't cover you. You got that in you. Don't be, don't be afraid of him. Don't back down from him, which is why yeah. you saw a different dude in 2010. Because the logic that I saw, what, what I saw in 2010 was a guy in Gasol that said, yo, listen, I don't know what's going to happen in this series. I don't know whether or not we're going to win, whether or not we're going to lose. You ain't kicking my ass like you did the last time, though. I bet you that. I bet you that. That's not yeah. happening. So I ain't going out like this. No, no that's not happening. Would, no. He would not take my lunch money today. No, you ain't kicking my ass like you did last time. So, uh-uh. Yeah. I just shot that link out, chat. Y'all, y'all mm -hmm. get in here. Get in here while you can. No doubt. I see no darken doubt. darken in there. I see leaf in there. My man mm -hmm. P5. I'm gonna pull y'all up in a second. Let us run through a couple more of these super chats. Y'all make sure y'all yep. like this video. Like this video. Yeah, come through, man. man we, got, we, got, we got a superstar cast in the waiting room right now. I see y'all. Mm -hmm. Uh Spoo tapped in and said, <clears throat> OG was the what OG was the Rosen and Levine supposed to be like Tatum and Brown. The same way you thought Kawhi and PG were supposed to be Tatum and Brown. No, nah, because DeRozan and Levine, they don't defend like Tatum and Brown. Mm. And that all-around game, they needed th – those two dudes, if you if you watch how they are, they really needed Lonzo Ball. He was the catalyst for that unit. And with him going down, if you, if you watch DeRozan, how much better DeRozan is when he played off the ball. His best years was with Kyle Lowry when he played off the ball. Zach Levine, he's one of the best transition players in the game, playing off the ball. But now, with Lonzo Ball out the lineup, now DeRozan has to be more of a playmaker. He's got to be more of a facilitator. That ain't his game. Same thing with Zach Levine. That's not his game. These two dudes in Tatum and Brown, that is their game. They can do those things. on the, And they can also defend at a high rate. So Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, thats I think that's closer to who Tatum and Brown could have been who, who Tatum and Brown are, who they should, who, who Kawhi Leonard and Paul George sh could have been, as opposed to the Rose and Zach Levine. Right, I can see that. Next one, Ski Hancho Two K. Who can help Miami win it all next year? A franchise player. First, you got number one. You got to get you a lead guard because Kyle Lowry is out. I think Gabe. I, I, I think Gabriel. I think Gabe Vincent, I'm sorry. I think Gabe Vincent is a consummate backup, but I think he's a damn good backup. But I think you got to get yourself a lead guard in there. I think that with Jimmy Butler, I don't think Jimmy Butler is over the hill. I still think that he's I think he's still I think he's still awesome. Same thing with Bam. Bam stepped his game up. I think you still I think you short a, a, a lead guard, and I think you short a five man, a legit five man, a five man who can, who can actually protect the rim, 
yeah. and rebound and have Bam move to his natural position, which is the four. Yeah, for sure. I could see that. Do you got anybody in mind? To be honest with you, I don't think you need a point guard that's going to score a lot. Honestly, it's, and it's too bad that he's hurt. I love Lonzo Ball in Miami. Oh, man, Lonzo Ball. I, I love Lonzo. Lonzo Ball. I love Lonzo Ball in Miami because, number one, bigger, better facilitator, could knock down the open long ball, could stretch the defense, really good defender, smart player. I think he would be perfect for what Miami is doing. And the same thing with the five spot. When I look at Tyus, when I look at uh, what's it, the big guy in Indiana, Oh, um, Miles, like, Miles Turner. Miles Turner. That's what I'm thinking about. I think he's perfect for what for what they're doing in Miami because now Bam can move to the four. He stretches the defense, so you ain't got to worry about the you ain't got to worry about the lane being clogged. So, and he plays on the block too. I think he would be perfect for them. Yeah, I can see that. This was such an unnecessary super chat. We do appreciate it, <laughs> Lance Mansfield. I, I'll tell you like this: we appreciate everybody that taps into the chat, super chat or not. But I will tell you, this, sir, was unnecessary. Mm. <laughs> Lance Mansfield says, Kings are the 26th ranked defense. Yes, they are. And, that what, is true. and, and again, Big Ox, you, you, you just mentioned it. When you run up on teams like Milwaukee, when you run up on teams like Boston, they're a tier ahead. And the reason why they're a tier ahead is because on the other side of the basketball, that's where the difference is. We could score it like you do, right? We can play fast like you do. We can slow you down. But can you slow us down? I think that's the yeah. Thing. Yeah, we can't. We, we're not going to be successful long in, into the playoffs if we can't, you know, step that defense up. But yeah. I think we'll get there. I do think we'll get there. Alex Pickering, my man. How do you uh, how do you see a healthy Chet next season? Hmm? I think that he. I think he could help Oklahoma City, but I will tell you this: with SGA emerging into what he's what he's turned into. The, the the timeline has now been pushed up, Ox, because we can't have Chet, you know, we can't wait three, four years for him to develop it. Like, this thing has to speed up because what we can't have is we can't have this guy slowly becoming that and then we're not making any progress because what's going to ultimately happen is we're going to lose SGA. So yeah. to see to see Chet next season, I, I every time I watch him, I think he's a more athletic, more skilled version of Sean Bradley. That's what he looked like to me. He looked yeah. like Sean. He looked like Sean Bradley with a handle, with a better handle and a jump shot. That's what he looked like to me. And if he could hold up, I think that they can. I I think that they can make some noise in the Western Conference. Okay, I can see that. Well, you know what? Since we're talking, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple of these guys up. I want to get some of their inputs on this on this chat super chat. Bring them dark in. How's my levels? Uh, you sound you sound all right to me, bro. Okay. How y'all doing? That's good. All right, all right. Damn, we got the whole squad in this bitch. What up? Yeah, so uh, fellas, I I pulled I pulled y'all up specifically right now to get your input on uh, on this super chat. After we after we do that, and you guys can you know get off a uh, get off a take or ask ask chill whatever question you got to, fellas. We are gonna keep it moving a little, a little quicker today though, so we guys won't be up here for 10, 15 minutes. So I just want to make sure I let y'all know that so y'all don't be sidetracked. So don't sit there, be quiet. If you got something to say. Make sure you speak on it. Um, real quick, though. So we got Darkin. Darkin, you go. Dabe? Yes, correct. You're the first Darkin person Dabe. to say it the first time. Thank you. Uh, K, uh, KB and uh, T. Jamal. What's going on? Sidebar. Ox, are you, Ox, this is such a sidebar. Bro. Are you Nigerian? Um, I, I don't know if my people are from Nigeria. I'm from, I was, you know, born and raised in California. You're Nigerian, uh, Chantal? Yeah. So I did one of those... Uh, but 23 and me things, I think I think almost 80% of my lineage is Nigerian. My brother. Yes, <laughs> oh, uh -huh. God. Okay. Yes, sir. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. I, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done, done ancestry. I had 99% uh, Yoruba. Okay. Hey! Yeah, I, I, haven't, I, I, haven't, I, haven't done, I haven't done one, but I, I want to. I want to see about I had as far some, as I, I had some. I have some Irish in me too, which means that you had some people sneaking in the slave quarters. I understand it. Yeah, that's, I, I, that's I, what I they do. That. I can dig what that is. So. Anyway, so, as you were uh, saying, big up. Yeah, so so uh, so KB, um, well, how do you how do you, how do you see a healthy check next year? What do you expect from him next year? Being coming in healthy. 
Um, my biggest concern with Chet will always just be his injury history. I mean, it's one of my biggest concerns with like a lot of these tall, skinny guys that are coming in. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's the same thing I have for with Victor Webb and Yama. I mean, they they do have the skills, the skill set and talent is there. Mm-hmm. However, they don't have enough muscle to wear, and they don't look as durable as they are. I mean, mm-hmm. like this. I mean, this is an injury that he picked it up in that uh that gym game. I, I don't in the know, summer game, but, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some summer league. game, yep. and then he got injured mm-hmm. and he was out of the year. And, and I, I I don't know what his previous injury history is, but other guys that are similar to him, I mean, they've also had, like, really bad injury history where they're out with like, a muscle contusion or they've had, like, knee and leg problems. So, I mean, if he is healthy, he'll definitely be a, a very important piece to that. Uh, to that Question for you. Team. Question for you, KB. Was it season? Because it happened in the summertime. Was it something that was season ender, end, season ending, or did, or was it more of a precaution where they held him out? Like, okay, what we don't want to do is we don't want to rush this guy. I think it was def- at the beginning. It was a precaution because mm-hmm. they didn't want to necessarily put him at risk to where he can maybe aggravate the injury further in the season. Right. Um, and I, th- I think that maybe I think there were talks of bringing him back. I'm not 100 percent sure of that because Oklahoma City was exceeding expectations to yeah. now where they're like um, competing in the playoffs or for a play-in spot. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was a uh, it was poor precaution. But um, yeah, that that's one only concerns with Chet. Like, if he's healthy, he'll definitely be a vital piece for that team going forward. But my injury concerns are always going to be there. Right. Yeah. Donna, I what you think about Chet coming I'm, in? I'm gonna be so year? honest. I do not give a fuck. Not even like the slightest. Like <laughs> I don't. I I think I I have a very strong feeling that the draft class he was that was that was Chet. Uh, oh, oh, fat dude. That's disrespectful. Oh, big boy. Um, and um, that that was the same one Paolo was in, right? Just last yeah, season. Just last who's, season. Who's, 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 who's the fat boy? He's talking, he talking about Bonchero. That's what he's talking about. Uh, that dude that's might be in the G League now. You know what's um, what's his face? You know he he got like two strand twists and he like kind of, but he's not like tall. You talking, talking about from Memphis? Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't even a lottery pick though. You talking about Lofton? Yeah. Yeah, but I was, I was still just in the general, none of those, none, no player from that draft, maybe it's because I didn't do any like of the due diligence that I should have, but none of them watching Paolo play. I'm not saying Paolo's bad. I think it's just, I just don't see anything that has made me be like, wow, these are like the, the future. Yeah, okay, with Dabe, I'm going to go ahead and cut you off right there. Uh, you definitely didn't do your due diligence. Make sure you take the time to watch Paolo Banchero, and I, before, you know because if you if you if if you if you feel that you haven't been wowed by him, then you haven't watched that kid. That kid came ready to play. He was ready for the NBA when he was a senior in high school. No, I, I I'm not saying that he's not NBA ready. I just don't. I'm just not a. I'm just personally, it's not like the way the the same amount of what's the word? I guess reverence you get when you saw like a. Like Kobe was coming into the league, or like, I, and I, I'm not saying that these people, like, we should every person who comes to the league should be striving for you know, to be a top ten player of all time. Yeah. When but you're the number least, two pick in the when you're the number two pick in the draft, you you got to be something special. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like when you're like so you're, not, so you're not you're not so, you're not sold on Chet. Basically, what you're saying. I'm not sold on Chet. I'm not sold on Paolo. I'm not sold on any of those boys from the draft. Okay. To be honest, what, what about, about what, what about you, Jamal? How you feel about I, that's I call, call you Jamal. That's your name, Jamal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool. So, okay, so how you feel about Chet coming in? When it comes to Chet, man, I have the same – I have an inverse concern with Chet that I have with uh, Zion. Zion was too big, so I had injury concerns. Mm-hmm. Chet is too small. He's going to get bullied. Mm-hmm. He's – Now, let me ask you this, Jamal. When you, you got a guy like Kevin Durant that shows up in the league, and he's real thin, right? I mean, Giannis shows up. Giannis is barely 200 pounds when he shows up. And – there's certain body types that guys have. I mean, Reggie Miller mm-hmm. wasn't exactly Reggie yeah. Miller wasn't exactly you know 230 pounds, but he played like that. When you get these tall guys, no does it does it automatically mean that they're injury prone, or do some guys just are able to avoid it? You know, I don't know. Um, when it comes to Durant, Dur- it's something about Chet. It looks. It looks, it looks frail. It looks, yeah, it looks let's, call it, let's, call it, let's call it what it is. You look, like, you look like a table that if you push it, it's going to fall apart. This looks like it's going to fall over. When I saw this guy play, he was like, I remember he was coming out of college. They were like, who's the best player in the NBA? He was like, me in six months or some crap like that. No. And I was like, this dude is putting a target on his back. 
No. And he got injured before he even stepped on the NBA floor. And so it was like, I'm just, I'm nervous for him. I don't, I, I'm one of those people who wish Penny Hardaway and Jerry Stackhouse and all these careers flourish without injury. And we yeah. actually got to see the potential. Well, I want to see what the potential is. I just don't, I don't know. You know, Jamal, I'm, I'm actually happy you said that because I'm just going to go ahead and go through a couple of Super Chats with y'all. First one from Brandon, Brandon, from the bro, Brandon from the Block. How would Penny Hardaway be in today's game? Jamal, you want to go? You want to kick that off? Um, I think it would translate pretty well. Um, he he was a shooter. He could he could handle the ball. He he was um, and if he could get with somebody like who's a Shaq type figure, if if you put Penny AD, on the 76ers, I think they would be I think they would be fire. I think he's an upgrade from Harden. Well, take it take it a step further than that, Jamal. An upgrade. Let's, let, 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 let's talk about the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you young, man. Yeah. Yeah. Take, 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 take this chance to learn something. Yeah. Tap okay. in. So, Jamal, if you look at if you look at the lead guards in the game today, Penny's playing today. He's healthy. There are no injuries. Is he better than Trey Young? Hell yeah. Yeah. Is he better than Drew Holiday? Of course. Is he yeah, I think is so he yeah. better is he is he better than Dame? Hmm. Uh, hmm. Now remember going, I the, I think so because does does Dane play defense? No, he like is no. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Penny wasn't a, Penny wasn't a ball hawk. I mean, he wasn't like, like locked down, but no, I think just but, just the era he was right. in, mm -hmm. he had to have more of a defensive mind, right? Than anybody playing now, right? But so the I offensive think that gap gives though. him an upgrade on Dane. Do, do, do you not do you not think there's an offensive gap between Damian Lillard and Penny Hardaway? That's no, what I, think I don't. It. You don't think that's so? the only reason that caused me to pause. But I mean, just because of the scoring influx. But when you look at everybody scoring seventy points, like... now here's the thing, D. When you say a gap, like what? When I when you say gap, I think something like this, and I don't think that there's a gap like this. I think that the time that they were playing, the offense was ran through Shaquille O'Neal, so yeah. he didn't have to score it like that. And when Shaq left. He started to break down. So we didn't get to see Penny like we see Damian Lillard, who the offense was ran through him, as opposed to when he was in college, when he was at Memphis, where he was this high-flying wire act. I think he could have done the same thing in the NBA, considering how wide open the game is. I think he'd be a top five guard in the game today. But I think he'd be a top 10 player in the game today, no doubt about do, it. But do you oh. do you but you're basing it off of what you saw from are you basing it off of college Penny or are you basing it off of or what Michael we saw, Penny. the little split that we saw? when he was playing with Shaq and before when he was healthy? Well, it was a combination because, well, his game in college clearly translated to the pro game. And the reason why is because the game was more wide open, right? Not only was the game more wide open, he had a dominant big man who took a lot of pressure off of him offensively. Well, if he's playing in today's game and he's more of an offensive threat, because again, the game is wide open. You got the long ball line, right? You got, you got more, be you got better transition players. So he's running with, thoroughbreds, that's going to enhance his game and make him even better as a player. Not just as a scorer, but as a player. And these people would have been working on their threes, on yeah. their three, on their long ball game, mm -hmm. to adjust to the, like, we're looking at scores now with everybody just chucking threes. Mm -hmm. It was you like um, three three-point specialists in the 90s. Uh, <laughs> because that's a freedom now. Like, coaches allow yeah. their players to do a lot more, right? Whereas back then, it was way more restrictive. Yo, Grant Williams, KB, KB, Grant Williams is shooting five threes a game. Grant Williams. <laughs> okay, it's but crazy. what is this? Is he knocking those down? Grant Williams? Yeah. I mean, if if if, if you want to say knocking them down, he's knocking them down at like a 30, 30, 33 or 34 percent rate. He's shooting so, five of them a game. So, so when you, you, got, you, 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 you got you got you got to close out on him, but it's not like he's a dead eye shooter. And so that's a, when, and that's the, that's the way the Boston Celtics play. But go ahead, I'm sorry. When people say stuff like that, and I always because we re, realistically we're dealing with hypotheticals here, so let, let's right. let's let's accept that. Right. When people say, "Well, of course they're going to work on their three, I think of the players who I'm like, like Russell Westbrook not being able to shoot to me blows my mind. Like just like the fact that you're a point guard in the NBA, you not knowing how to shoot to me doesn't make any sense in the context of the NBA. He's not a good shooter. So you guys were like, well, obviously these guys will like come into the league and they'll just they obviously will get better at threes. I'm like, well, how do we know that? 
How do we? What? What? What if they're just well, bad? I, I don't. I don't. I don't assume. No, go ahead, shoot. I'm just saying the thing with me is oh. Penny wasn't a bad shooter. Yeah. When he played, and, so and, and, and the game, like like Chill said, the game was run through Shaq. Shaq was in the middle just bullying people. That was Orlando's <laughs> game plan. So it was about. It wasn't about shooting a long ball. Even I think even if like Reggie Miller was on that team, they wouldn't have been shooting a bunch of threes. Yeah. Um, so Dabe, my my thing to that is, I never say that Penny would just be a better shooter now. It, to me, that doesn't matter. I, you could say, I, w- I would take Penny Hardaway with his game then and just bring him here, and I still think Penny would really still be the man. Um, but uh, so, fellas, y'all got y'all got any smoke? Y'all got his any game. Tape? His get his, his game translates. That's the I think that's the difference mm-hmm. more than anything. Penny Hardaway's game translates to today. Okay. So I do. even 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 shooting the long ball. Don't get me wrong. I don't think that he would be a high volume long ball shooter. But his overall game translates to the game today. Right. I agree. Very very athletic. Super explosive. I do yeah. have smoke with Ox. Um, well, just because. <laughs> <laughs> Ox who? <laughs> Me? Okay, yeah. well, bring no, the it's, it's, it's not really smoke. I guess I want to get more of your. I I've been I watch your I watch your I watch a lot of the stuff that you guys do, but I always hear this one statement from you. You don't care what happens if you lose. Don't give a damn. You don't give a damn. I I was raised my, that way. I was raised that way, Dabe. It's my my mother. She was my mother was a hooper. She was cold. She was nothing to play with on the hoop court. All, all mama would, care about is you she, win or if you lose. I don't care about the about she the would, she, would, she would come to my games and when I even after the game, I'll be like, Ma, I did this. She'll be like, uh, well, if you if you're that good, you know what I'm saying? Get yourself right. a W. You know, I'm happy for you. Proud of you that you have fun. Way to try hard, keep playing hard, respect your coaches, respect the refs. But you need to win if you want to talk to me about it. Okay. I, I, I respect that, but it's not boxing. It's it's not wrestling. It's not MMA. It's not Tennis. Taekwondo. It's oh. not to me, like, to, to me. To me, it is. It, but be, if if there's five other players who are liable, like they're liable, it's not just like oh, it's whatever. Like these people are liable to right. do things to help you win. How how can you be like okay, I did everything in my power. The the, the game went into triple overtime. I'm. I have seventy, twenty, and forty-five, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, and I still lose. And you look at me and be like, "Well, sucks to suck." Like that. that it, no, <laughs> there's no way. I, well, I do. I'm just. You know, I got. I got to say this. Basketball is one of those things about life that's just not fair, and it will never be fair. You know what I'm saying? It's a team sports. You lose some. If it's if it's your teammates' fault, and hey, you got to go home and sleep with that. Take it on the chin and deal with it. Basketball is not a fair game. You know, yeah. it's just what, what happens, happens, and we got to live with it. Um, KB, you got any smoke with anybody? Yeah. You got any questions? Because I'm about to. About just to a question. Tonight. Yeah, just a question. Uh, with the way the Western Conference is looking and how chaotic it is with all the injuries and how all the teams have been playing, you know, inconsistently and all, like, who do you guys have coming out the West right now? Because, I mean, it's a it's a wild West fight right up there. I, as, as much as people get on me about the Golden State Warriors, as oh long as. As, as long as Steph, Clay, and Dre have been in the lineup and they've been healthy since 2014, they've been in the NBA Finals. So until somebody drops them, they are the team to beat in the Western Conference, and I think Denver has the best shot. KB, I have Denver. a hot take on that, KB, though. I'll tell you, though. I think that – wait, who, do we know if, – if the playoffs happen today, who does Denver face in the first round? Denver, uh, would Denver have facing the winner of the eighth seed. So the eighth seed would – it's either going to be the – so seven, it's the seven, Thunder, eight, Mavericks, nine, Timberwolves, or ten, Jazz. So either – no. Uh, so I'm yeah, guessing maybe the Mavs uh, or the Timberwolves or Jazz, either one of them. I have – I don't know why I feel this way, but I told my friend this. I don't know if I've said this on another show before, but I think Denver either gets out on the first round or they make it to the finals. I don't think it's there's any in between. Yeah. I don't no. think it's any in between. And I think whatever happens, I think what happens is going to speak a lot for yeah. what like the NBA is going to look like. Because if they get out the first round, that – the, the slander is gonna be ridiculous. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be funny. Yeah. <laughs> so chill. So chill. You said you, you said you said Warriors. KB. Do you do you got um who do you got coming out the West? Honestly, um, right now we got the Phoenix Suns coming out if Kevin Durant is healthy. Simply because mm-hmm. right now I think in terms they got the most veteran experience. I think Monty Monty Williams is a great head coach. I think depth when it comes to playoff time is a little overrated. 
Yeah. And I think the rest of the West is just, I don't trust anyone. Like, the Grizzlies and Kings, I think, are a bit too young in order to get to the finals. The Nuggets, I have no hope in the Nuggets. I don't know. No. I don't trust Mike Malone. I don't trust in their defense, apart from Jokic. Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. are shells of themselves. And I don't mm. trust their bench either. So I don't really trust the Nuggets. Yeah. The Clippers are the Clippers. And uh, they've had, they're facing injuries, especially with Paul George now. Um, the Warriors, if their road record was Wait, wait, wait. Can't be. Can't be. Can't be. Who you got coming out the West? Yeah, I got the Suns. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's only, but only if KD's only if KD's healthy. So if KD if only is healthy, yeah. not healthy, g- give me give me another team, KB. The West That's is so dog shit right now. I have to go with the Nuggets then. But like, it, honestly, I can see anyone coming out. Reef, who you got? Why is the West dog shit? It's uh, it's, everyone's injured or everyone's playing inconsistent. Like, there's so many injuries in the Western Conference right now, or so many absences. I think, I think, I think it's. I don't think it's dog shit. I think it's a dog fight. I think it's competitive. That's what I felt. Yeah. The real what finals will be the Western Conference finals. Uh, the Eastern Conference West, finals. Whoever comes out the East is winning the championship. That's how I view it. I think I got. For now, since all the teams are hurt, I'll say Nuggets. I would say, okay. eighty was healthy. Maybe the Clippers if they could stay healthy, but. For the moment, I might just go with Nuggets. And David, who, did you say who you got coming out the West? I did not say, but um, this is – this is oh, my God. There's a part of me that's delusional, and there's a part of me that's trying to make sense. So the delusional part of me is, like, thinking if for some God – like, God if God willing, the Lakers somehow do something, and we see the Lakers – because if, if the Lakers get Denver the first round – I'm I'm taking the Lakers. I don't. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Okay, so you got Lakers. You the delusional Lakers. Now the, the other delusion, side, what you got? Pure delusion is Lakers. Um, if I'm being more realistic, I would say. Wow. Okay. Honestly, I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go, with the. the Come Grizzlies. on, Dabe. We gotta. We gotta. I'm going with the Grizzlies. I'm going with the Grizzlies. Okay. Wow. All right, for sure. With Dabe, KB, I appreciate y'all for jumping in. Yeah, y'all, y'all stay, stay in the chat. Y'all uh, tap in. You know, we'll, we'll be here. Hang out. Yeah, right. hang out, fellas. Hang out. Appreciate right, y'all. Appreciate everyone, everyone, brother. No doubt. Brian, brief. What up, brothers? You doing? What's going on? How you on doing, Chill Town? Ox, how you I, doing? Hey. Hey, remember what I told you? Anytime you come on here, I already made it clear. Anytime you come on here, if that hat ain't on, we ain't talking. Yeah. Hey, real quick, about, clear. about oh, I got two quick points, real quick. Uh, it's about the Mets, and I think that they actually have the defender of the year, as well as about OKC. You let me just run real quick. Is that I'm listening? You listening? All right. Okay. Okay, oh, I already think that the coach of the year is Mike Brown because of what he did with the Kings. But as far as to make an argument, I think the Mets got a shot because. Jacqueline Vaughn is a new coach after they mm-hmm. fired uh, Nash. Steve Nash. They lost yep. AD. They lost Kyrie Irving. They're expecting mm-hmm. Claxton to do more defensively as well as offensively because mm-hmm. they just lost Kyrie and KD. Also, Claxton is going up against the big guys. And B, he's going mm-hmm. against uh, Jokic. He's going against all these big guys, and they're all yeah, in the MVP yeah. competition. And he's the yeah. one holding it down. He's still averaging two blocks, same thing as uh, Lopez. Only mm-hmm. difference between Holiday and Lopez is they're on the same team. So for me, Claxton should get more credit for that. Plus, they're mm-hmm. also in the playoff run right now. So mm-hmm. I just think that the Nets should get player of the year, Claxton, and coach of the year, Jacqueline Vaughn. Okay. Leaf, well, hold, hold, on for a second. Hold, hold on for a second, Brian. Leaf, hey, if you're going to come in here, if you're going to come in here, fix your face. That's first. Fix of my all. face. Yeah, fix your face. Fix my face about what about? I just heard. Fix your face. You are yeah, Brian, I'm sorry. Huh? And then the OKC point, the OKC point is OKC is doing well right now, but yeah. I think that their advantage is Shaw. Shaw gets to the line basically as he's like the fourth rank person getting to the line. That being right. said, if they were to get Dart or Jalen Williams, the center forward that they have, number eight, they both yeah. average 13 points. They get them more involved in the game the way they draw fouls in the beginning. Get those yeah. defensive key players out because they're in yeah. foul trouble early. That'll bring them – plus they're 78%, both of them. So you get yeah. both of those guys involved at the foul line. That moves up their offense and their defense because they're taking the defensive players off the court early. So for mm-hmm. me, OKC, they mm-hmm. just need a little bit more fine-tuning. But like I yeah. said, Mike Brown, coach of the year. I love what he's done. Fox, mm-hmm. Mr. Clutch of the year mm-hmm. at age 25. I got nothing but good things to say to him. 
But okay, uh, she's my future team. But right now, the Nets deserve to get coach of the year and defensive player of the year. That's just my uh, thing. Which I got uh, that's a solid. That's a solid take, brother. Hey, Antoine, what's up? What up, Antoine? What's, what's, what's up, up brother? What's going on, man? Hey, I just wanted to talk about the Clippers for a little bit, man. Yeah, I'm a, look mad, I'm a Kawhi man. fan, if anything. Yeah, you know I'm saying, been following Kawhi since 2014. Yeah. And, uh, man, I feel like this year was for sure our year until last night happened with yeah. PG, man. But I still feel like uh, he's getting reevaluated uh, in two to three weeks. <laughs> so I feel like that's enough time for him to maybe come back. Yeah. I don't know how he gonna be with that with that knee, but I feel like the Clippers gonna do some work, and I feel like they are gonna be number one. They are gonna go to the finals. Y'all can mm. book it. They are gonna play against the Bucks, and they are gonna win in seven, bro. If you look at if you look at the if you look at the Clippers roster on paper, they look like the NBA champs. Yeah. If you look at their roster, they look like the NBA champs. But what's been their Achilles heel? Would it bug you out if I told you that Anthony Davis has played more games than Kawhi Leonard and Paul George over the I last few years? Much, man. I hear that too much. And I, I, and I, know that that's, I know that sounds crazy to you, but that's what's going on, right? So we're talking about a team that can't hold up. That's been their Achilles heel. It, it hasn't been the fact that they've, they've, they've underperformed, even though they have in stretches. But most importantly, it's been their health. And what they've been trying to do is they've been trying – to manage Kawhi Leonard as much as possible. If you notice how they brought him along slow this season, and then they started ramping up his minutes later on in the season. They did the same thing with Paul George. Right? Yeah. They did the same thing with Paul George. The question is, is can these dudes hold up once we get to the once we get into the playoffs? Adding Russell Westbrook to that roster was a big deal. A lot of people don't give Russ credit for what he's for what oh, he's yeah. doing. I think he's good for that offense. And the reason why I think he's good for that offense is because he takes the ball out of Leonard's hands. He takes the ball out of Paul George's hands. And he gives these guys, he, he gives these guys an opportunity to take plays off, right? And to rest as opposed to these guys got to play make, these guys got to score, these guys got to be the primary ball handler. They don't have to do that when they run with when they run with Russ. And then what they do is they take the ball out of Russ's hands when we get into the meat and potatoes of the game. And now they're rested because Russ has been handling that the majority of the game. So I don't think this is a bad thing. The question is, is can the Clippers hold up? I feel like I they can. Yeah. Go ahead, Bob. Now, I was going to say that uh, <laughs> I was going to say that it's Westbrook's time now. It's better time now to show everybody what he really is about. He wants to show everybody, stop all the nation. He need to get in that gear that we see. That's all I was going to say. I think that Clippers got a chance to make it in. I got a question for y'all. What happens if the Clippers win the NBA championship? How are we talking about Russ? Oh God! Y'all, y'all, y'all want to talk about that, do y'all? No, no, no! no. Uh, we got to respect the man you made it. Talk about that. Talk, I talk that talk, shit, <laughs> Wait, chill. Will Westbrook not be a? Will he, will he not be a top ten point guard all time? Top ten? I think he that already. I yeah. wow. This this I, championship I, don't yeah. change nothing. Really. I think, really don't I, change nothing. Yeah, I, Are you sure that about that? I don't think it changes. It, no, nah, nah, it gets it, you in the room. It don't change nothing. It gets you in the room. Like so, Charles Barkley, so, yeah, but he can't get in the room. But what I'm saying is that in the next, I, I don't know if y'all heard this, but in the next year or two, Russ gonna be a part of the 20, 25,000 point, ten thousand assist club. It's only one other dude in that club. That's James. Mm -hmm. No, that's it. I so you, if, okay. if you if, if you put a if, if you put, if you put a ring on Russ finger. And in 20 years, all we looking at, because that's what you dudes do. That's what a lot of us do. A lot of, a lot of people just look at numbers. So if you, in 20 years, you see Russ won an NBA championship as a lead guard, 25,000 points, 10,000 assists, what kind of conversation are we having about? What kind of conversation are we having about? This is a fire conversation. So, also, what about the triple doubles? How many triple doubles does he have? As a matter of fact, what I'm talking about. See, man, we, 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 we talking about something different now. All right, nah, fellas, nah, fellas, nah, since y'all nah. since y'all up here, since y'all up here, y'all came to chill with chill, y'all came to kick it. Y'all gonna come through some of these uh super chats with us. Ugh, not we can not crazy. neglect the super chats. The super chats run the show. We we happy that y'all here, but this is where it's at. Um let me go. Christopher D Christopher D tapped in, said second half of the season, Paolo has been mid. Most rookies, especially yeah, rookie yeah. of the year candidates. After mm -hmm. the after the first half of the season, they are mid because they ain't used to playing this long. Right, yeah, right. Fatigue. They're not used to playing this long. So that's what happens. And plus the competition yeah. is higher as well. So it's yeah. more, you're getting more competitive. Close to the playoffs. Look at what happened with Christian Layton. It's a prime example. Yeah. So yeah. it happens with, with, with most rookies. Christopher D actually sent that sent that same chat through twice. Christopher mm -hmm. D, good looking. Um my man Tyson. Salute y'all brothers. Sons and six. 
No. In six no, years. No. Six years. Six oh, years. I, have questions. <laughs> I heard KD might be coming back in, in like within a week. Like, what's going on with KD? Let's like, say I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. Let, you, let's let's say he comes back. Let's say he comes back in a week. So. What, what what's the what's the what's the rap what's the rap on KD? So All right, look, I don't like KD's game, but the way he's able to score fluently and makes it look mm -hmm. easy. Wait 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 wait. I'm 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 sorry I'm sorry, brother. I, I typically don't like to tell nobody else, but we gotta <laughs> Hold on. the breaks. Hold what do you mean you don't like? Because look, there's a lot of things I don't like about Kevin 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 Durant. His game is not one of them. Not one what is it no, about no, no, no. KD's game? I'm gonna tell you why you don't I don't like, like KD. I don't like his game because I played against guys like in high school and all of that that just were that freaking good, and it just pisses me off. I'm just saying. Uh, look who you hate him? Yeah. No, 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 no. Hater, listen, huh? listen, he makes it look easy to where anybody else can do it. That's what I'm saying. It's not that easy. He's a great no, talent, not, but the way he makes it look so easy, it's like I, I could do that, but then you're like, no, I really can't. I'm not KD. No, that's who what I don't him? like about him. He makes so it look easy, but it's not that easy. Yeah, but, <laughs> no, no, no. Plus, if you go into any just, system, you're just so nice. Old. I hate you. You're, you're just, just so nice. Exactly. I hate you. He's like, oh, I don't know. What do you think? Wild. That's exactly. wild. That's exactly. wild. Oh, hey, man. my man, my man, Rallo five 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 tapped in and said, "Most disappointing power forward ever, Derek Coleman." No, no, no. I gotta argue no. with that. That defense. No. I like Coleman with the Nets. No. I like them with the Nets. Absolutely. Do, okay, so, 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 look. This is what we'll do. So he said, most, most disappointing power forward ever. I'm gonna go around. Do, do, uh, do y'all want to say who is your most disappointing power forward ever? That's easy. Who you got? Kwame Brown. <laughs> well, Kwame, Kwame, Kwame Brown played the five, right? If yeah, I'm not yeah. mistaken. I know that's what yeah. I said I was just playing. <laughs> So, so Kwame, Brown, Kwame Brown played the five. So the most yeah. disappointing power forward in NBA history? That's easy. Anthony Bennett, number one overall pick in the draft. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Reef, 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 Reef who, you, who, you, who you got, Reef? You got, you got was, one for us, Reef? I was thinking about a name, but he said Anthony Bennett, and I think that's a clear answer, to be honest. Okay. That's easy. Uh, right, De Devion, who you got? It, it had to be Anthony Bennett. I thought he was a small forward, though. I didn't know he was a forward. So, so is, is, that, is that consistent always? So I'll stop asking you all. Oh, yeah, I got it. Anthony Anthony Bennett. Bennett. The only okay, way I'm... somebody would have to pick somebody else if they didn't live up to like what they thought they was gonna be, but I mean, like as far as just becoming nothing, it's, it, it got to be him. Got to be. Him. Why would he say Derek Coleman? Because be, be, because Derek Coleman was supposed to be a better version of like what Malone was. See, exactly. See, that's the only uh, way. That, that, that's what it was when when, when, they when, thought they were, when yeah. Derek Coleman showed up. Left hand, they could knock down the mid range, could pass with the best of them. Was a real good transition player, clean glass. Tough as nails, but Coleman didn't really turn out to be what everybody thought he was going to be as the number one overall pick. So, but you can't be more disappointing than somebody who didn't play at all. Yeah, facts. What do you think facts. about Sharif Adu Rahim? Oh, he was awesome. Remember him, Chill? He, he was, was just whack. Vancouver was Vancouver was whack. That was the problem. It wasn't him. I, Vancouver exactly. was whack. Fellas, so like I said earlier to the to the last group, Thank you know, you. we're moving, we're moving quick today, y'all. So we we appreciate y'all stopping in. Uh, Have a good so, one. So I'm, so I'm, so I'm sorry if y'all ain't get off which I wanted to get off. Y'all jump. You know, we'll, we'll be back, though. We'll be back. Right, Chill. Stay up. Grab be easy. Be easy, B. About that, the Ryan uh, right. take for next week. What'd you say, Reed? Say it again, Reed. Kobe Bryant take. Like we, had, we had a conversation last week about Kobe Bryant. I still want to get back to the week. What about All him? Right. Come on. We got, we got time real quick. Let's, let us have oh, it. Kobe Bryant about being top 10. We were talking about Mad, I would. I named two players who I think you should, based off your standards, you should remove. What are my standards? I well, want to make you. Sure that, I, I want to make sure that I'm clear on my standards. Don't misrepresent him now. Yeah, I, I want to make sure that we clear on my standards. One, right, so game is wrong. timeless. Game is timeless. Okay. Two, did you dominate? Three, okay. did you win? Four, was your game transcended? Okay. Five, how social? How socially impactful were you? Okay, so I think all of those, Kobe Bryant's better than Larry Bird at. I, all of them. All the all, everything that you just named, mm -hmm. timeless. Because Kobe Bryant, he had lo, lo, uh, more longevity. He also won more than Larry Bird. He now you say long. Now you say longevity. How mm -hmm. long was Kobe Bryant's? Like I, I'm, I, I, I would say after the 2002 season. Yeah, right? said, I, 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 said, I would say two, I would say 2002 to 2000, probably 13. So okay. that's a, that's a decade. He was awesome. Yes, and then Larry Bird, I'd say what from. Uh, let's say since he came in 80 to 80, I will say 80, maybe 81, 82 to 87. I'm going to say, eight, I'm going to say he walked in the door in 79. I'm going to say till 90 because he was first team all in the <laughs> as a rookie. So he was that dude from the door. 
Uh, do you think he was at an all time like still that Larry Bird that we knew past eighty seven? Because I think so, past eighty seven, I was like, okay, let, I can see a decline. Where Kobe Bryant, I saw him in, in like you could say, let's say oh two, he was still maybe the best player in the league in in twenty ten. In twenty ten, he was the best player. So that was year. Let's see. He came in ninety six. He came in in ninety six. So that was year sixteen, right? So in so that so during his prime, so from two thousand two to two thousand ten. So from 2002 to 2010, that eight-year stretch. So mm-hmm. after year eight in his prime, he was still the best player in the league. So Bird in 1979 when he showed up till let's see, eight Bird, years. Bird came in 80 or uh, Bird, Bird showed up in 79. He showed up with Magic, right? Okay. So, so Bird showed up with Magic. So Bird eight years, right? So let's say from eight from 79 to 88. Mm-hmm. So that's nine years. Just so you know, in in 88, Bird went 30 and 10 mm-hmm. that year. 30, 10, and I think he was 30, 10, and 6. He went 50, 40, 90 that year. Jordan won the league MVP. I thought Bird was going to win it, to be honest with you. But that's a that, that's nine that's nine years. Not only is that nine years, seven of those nine years, he finished first or second in league MVP votes. So not, only am I the best, so not only am I the best player in the game at my position, I'm arguably the best player in the league. The and in that, three, in that three-year stretch, that three-year stretch, that three, hold on, hold on for a second, that three-year stretch where he won the league MVP, Mm-hmm. The three year stretch when he won the league MVP. Like, if Joker would have won the league MVP this year after the third year, can we say that Joker is the best player in the game? No, because for me, no. MV, like, right, we, we, we wouldn't say that. After, <laughs> no. 80, after Bird won it in 86, Bird was the best player in the game. He was better than Neek. He was better than Magic. Jabal was over. He was better than Bernard King. Uh, like I said, Dominique Wilkins had just showed up. Jordan had just showed up. Um, he was better than Alex English. He was hands down the best player in the game, and it wasn't a question of whether or not he was that. Uh, and, I, and I was just, and I was just after that third MVP, and he was still <clears throat> at that level two years later. Okay, so, so the the problem with that for me is there are years where I believe Kobe Bryant was still the best player in the league, and he didn't win those MVPs. Here's because, the difference. Yeah, I'm sorry. Keep going. Like from like 06, let's say for he didn't like I still believe Kobe Bryant was the best player in the league. 06, 07, and then starting 08 to 2010, you can make an argument between him and LeBron. I would take Kobe for those years over LeBron. But just because you didn't win MVP, does it? Because, for example, people like like Jokic has two MVPs. If someone wants to come to me and tell me, okay, Jokic produced more in his like two year stretch or three year stretch because he has two or three MVPs, I'm looking at you like, no, you have to look at the context behind it. Well, we got to do the same thing with Steve Nash. If we're going to do that with Jokic, we got to do the same thing with Steve Nash. Which I, I, I agree. I, right. I, I, I agree. So we like, do the same thing with Steve Nash if we're gonna do that with Joker. I agree. The but, point that I, the point that I was making with bringing up the league MVPs is that the league MVP doesn't all it isn't always the best player, but sometimes it is, and in Bird's case, it was. Okay, so do you think Kobe deserves more MVP? What, I'm trying to figure out what year. Well, we got to get to the bottom of what the league MVP is. The guy who's the most valuable to his team's success. It's not necessarily the best player. Sometimes the best player wins it, uh-huh. but it's the, it's the guy who's the most valuable to his team's success. So when you mm-hmm. talk about Kobe Bryant and those league MVPs, well, what year do you think he should have won it? Okay, so I have so in '09. Uh, you think you think Kobe like where do you rank Kobe in that, in that year to win MVP? Do you think that it was a conversation for? Him? Oh, absolutely. It was a conversation for him to be in the league MVP conversation. No doubt about it. You think he was more valuable than LeBron? I do not. LeBron James led the league in he, he led the league in fourth quarter points. Not only did he lead the league in fourth quarter points, he led the league in 25 point, 25 point, five assists, five, five, five rebound games. Um he led I think he led he led the league in fourth quarter points, led the league in second half points. Um not only did he lead the league in second half points, he was second. He finished second that year in Defensive Player of the Year, so he was elite on both sides of the basketball. Add that to the fact that the Cleveland Cavaliers won sixty six games that year. So, did you believe LeBron was better than Kobe? Bryant? See, but this this is what I'm talking about. Is the difference between being a better player and yes. being more valuable? Yes. Those, those two things are not the same thing. That's exactly. And at that point. time, now at that time, now at that time, I think it was 2010. To be honest with you, at that time in 2010. I felt like James was a better player than Kobe, but I couldn't deny what Kobe Bryant had done in that three-year stretch. Yeah, I that's couldn't why do it. 2011. I'll say 2011. I'll say like LeBron was for sure the best player in the league. But anyway, so I would just like that was just I think with Kobe, and especially for Magic, the argument for Kobe, like people never use that same argument for Magic. Everybody's arguing top three player of all time. True. Yeah. I, I have a hypothetical for you. I, 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 real, real, real quick, JB. Real, real quick, JB. I uh, brief. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Pre- appreciate appreciate you for stopping by, bro. My uh, man, that, you know you, you made some really good points for Kobe yeah. Bryant. We all know, we all know he's you know a, a, a legend. Mm-hmm. R R P B. And on and on top uh, of that, Reef, what are you talking about? I got him at like thirteen or at, like what if I moved him up one space to ten? Would that make you happy? Yes, it would. <laughs> <laughs> but, all right, Reef, just hey, stay stay in the chat, man. Uh, kick it with us. All right, man. Right. Yeah. All right, uh, damn, JB, look like he froze up. We was just about yeah. to get to him. Are you, JB, you good? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Hey, JB, before, 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 before you get this off, JB, I do want to say something real quick to you, P5. I was listening. P, you, P5, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I just wanted to holler at you real quick, bro. You asked the question. Um, nah, bro, take your hand off your face, bro. It's, just, it's all, all right. up. You, you asked the, you asked the question. Um, I think it was on. Uh, Ticket versus the world or open gym? You asked you asked the question. It was a good question. You mm-hmm. said, what is it going to take for you to get to the next level? I believe you said you were like a 6'4", shooting guard, wing, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I don't think you got a fair question. I think there was a lot of tempers. A lot, a lot of people were riled up. I just want to say this, brother. You make sure you stay in those books. Go to class. You know what I'm saying? Stay in shape. Work hard. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 study for your SATs. Keep your mind right. Work, you know, work on your game. You know what I'm saying? Do that. Make sure you keep it positive. Don't skip, don't skip the weight room, bro. I just want to make sure you keep it positive. Don't don't listen to none of the nonsense, bro. I got you. I got you. What's up, JB? What's the- yeah, I, so yeah. I wanted to ask you a quick question, and you, and you don't have to go into detail. You just give me the, your answers. So I know you have, you know, you have bird and magic over uh Kobe all time, which is cool. But let me ask you this: if if you were entering as a GM, you're entering a league. With Jordan as the best player or LeBron as the best player, and you had to build a team, would you want to build around one of those players over Kobe? Yes. Okay. Wait, it was LeBron and who? LeBron and Jordan led league, whatever the case may be. They're the, it could be, I mean, two separate leagues, Jordan and LeBron. But let's say you had to face them and you're a GM. Would you rather the question build around he, the Kobe? The question he's asking me, he's asking me whether I want to build around Kobe, Magic, or Bird. I'd rather build around Bird and Magic than Kobe. Yeah, I would even also if, rather build even, around Magic or Bird. Even if you knew you had to face Jordan in the, or or LeBron in the end? Yeah. Well, there's no guarantee. I, I think that you, I, I again, we're going, off, we're, we're, going, we're going off hypotheticals, but I saw. I do too. I do too. And I saw what a unit that was built around Bird did against Jordan. I saw what a unit that was built around Magic did against Jordan and would have and could very well have done against LeBron. I saw what those units were built around. I I saw what those units did when they were built around Bird and they were built around uh Magic. I saw what those units that was was built around those units that was built around Kobe, I saw what they did too. And they were also awesome. No doubt about that. But if I had to pick between the three of those guys, I would it's it's I think it's a lot less difficult to build around Magic and Bird, considering what their skill set is and how how complete of players that they are, as opposed to Kobe Bryant. In general, I agree with you. Like if it was other people besides having like if I had to face MJ at the end, I would prefer to have Kobe in almost any situation. Let me ask another quick question. Um, so if you had a bench cut, whatever, um, Antoine Walker, Abdul Rahim, and Vin Baker, how would you do it? Ooh, Ooh. damn, huh? JB. <laughs> So I'm starting Antoine Walker because I, I love that's who watched the kid in Orlando. That's Antoine Walker, except he's a better athlete. That, mm-hmm. that, that, that's who that is. Okay. Um, Talking about Ben Carroll, right? Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that's okay. that's who he reminded me of. He reminded me of Antoine Walker, too. set, set, a, set, a, set, a, set a better athlete. And the other two, you said Abdul, right? Abdul and uh, and Vin Baker. Baker. I and think Vin Baker. As, 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 as good as Vin Baker was, I think Abdul was a better overall player. And not, I, I can't use the I can't just use the context as a better overall player. I, I I don't think that that's enough. But if I was picking between the two of those dudes, I think Raheem was a better athlete. He had a money mid range game. I got to go with him instead of Ben Baker because Baker. I watched Carl Malone, who was ten years older than him, eat his lunch. I'm I'm not I I, I, I always stood on the logic that ain't no dude ten years older than me gonna eat my lunch if I'm a pro. <laughs> that ain't happening. It's not happening. Okay. Ben Baker was like Ben Baker. Was ben Baker. Right. Like, I like Ben Baker. French. But I, 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 hey, I think I agree with that star bench cut. Hey, uh, yeah, I just want to get some. One other thing I, I wanted to touch on your guys' Penny thing. The one thing that Penny could do, and I didn't see it live, but that I heard that he could do that other six, seven guards or even guards smaller couldn't do, is he could turn up in full court and dribble up against Muggsy Bowles. That's how nice yeah. his handle was. 
Which yeah. if you know ball, you know that's hard. When you turn and you look yes. and you have a little short mm-hmm. guy in front of you and you're trying to get yeah. up the court, you're like trying to get, either get your mm-hmm. point guard or whoever can handle better than you and give them the ball so you don't have to try. And he was nice and tran- and he was nice in transition too. Nice. Yes, he was. Super he was nice. nice in transition. Yo, Breezy, too. Yo, Breezy what's up, bro? What's up? Uh, I mean, obviously, I came here to pay, you know what I'm saying, pay respect to the, uh, you know, the king. Y'all gave us that work. What up, Leaf? What up, Chill? What up, P5? Yeah. What up, DB? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you gave us that work, you know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't, at the expense of hurt, I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want to see him get hurt. Um, hopefully, he's healthy again. Um, but I'll make it quick. Uh, a dope show, by the way. I've been listening in the chat the whole time. This is dope panel, dope chat, dope show. Um, I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask Chill. In your opinion, how tight should the rotation be for the playoffs? Any playoff team, how tight should the rotation be? Because you know they cut the rotation sometime, um, and it's less players playing. Um, how tight do you think the rotation should be? I'm a little biased when it comes to stuff like that because, in my estimation, and in my years watching the game, yo, we need everybody. And I watched Phil Jackson go to an 11 man rotation. I watched Steve Kerr go to a 11 man rotation when he had. Uh, Iguodala and Sean Livingston and all of that. I, we need everybody, and everybody is valuable. I don't appreciate this seven, eight man rotation because I've Thanks. always, I, I've always looked at going we into the playoffs. Room. I've always looked at going into the playoffs where yo, we need everybody, and we need everybody to do what they do best. And if I got a seventh man who does this awesome, go. if I got an eighth go. man, if I got a ninth man, if I got go. a tenth man, yo, we need this dude too. You go. Why is he not in the rotation? There we need go. these guys, though. There you go. There yeah, you no, go. you answered my question. That that was the only question I got. That was the only question I got for today. Just so what's you know, up, what's up, Leaf? Just, so, just so you know, Leaf, I do know the game. I don't know if you know that, no, but I, know I, I, game, I, I, I do, I do know the game. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Hey, time out, time out. I, I, I want to ask you. I want to ask you. I know the game. I'm not sure. Why, why did you? <laughs> Hey Leaf, why did you freak out at uh Jock Vaughn and uh, uh Nick Claxton take the old dude hat earlier? Why I don't want to so talk about that. You? No, no, we're not talking about that. No, I'm not answering that. No, no, no. Why is it so hey, it's all, No, hey, it's all good. Hey P5, you got you got you got any questions for chill? You got you got you got you got any questions for chill? Anything? I wanted to I, I want I wanted to run my top ten by him and see what y'all thought about it. Your top ten? Uh current day, not all time, current day. Let's get it, let's get it, P5. All right. Uh, first, I have two like players that almost made it: LeBron and SGA. They almost well, made my top. So those, 10. Those, those honorable, honorable mentions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not twelve. SGA ain't top at 10, ten no more. At ten, we got Jason Tatum. Okay. Nine, Damian Lillard. Yeah. Eight, AD. Seven, Kawhi. Six, Luca. Five, Embiid. Four, KD. Three, Curry. Two, Jokic. One, Giannis. That's that's, that's right after healthy. seven. It, it's all went as, as we talk right now. No, it's just like I, I don't I don't change my top ten on a day to day basis. So I guess it's just like current day NBA players. It's a current list. A current list. How yeah. you feel about that list, Joe? He, he was telling it to I, you. I, I don't know. I don't know if KD is a top three player in the game right now. Considering I have him, at, he, I have he, him at four. I think you have them four. Right. I don't know if I don't know if KD is a top five player in the game right now because considering he's been in and out the lineup, so I'm not sure in terms of a talent. Yeah, he still got the goods, but I don't know if he's a, a top. I don't know if he's a top four player in the game. I'm not. I'm not putting him ahead. Of, I'm not putting him ahead of Luca. I'm not putting him ahead of Joker. I'm not putting him ahead of Embiid, and I'm not putting him ahead of uh, Jason Tatum. I'm not. And that, that that that's there's a difference between being a better player and having a better season, right? So prime example would be with the Boston Celtics. You know Isaiah Thomas in 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 the 16 17 season. You know he was a B player who had an A year. Yeah. Does that mean he was as be- that mean he was as good as all of these other dudes? No, nah. mm-hmm. he just had an A year. So if we're just talking about this year and this year alone, I mean, I have a difficult time putting a guy who's been consistently in the lineup ahead of a guy who's basically missed two months. Yeah, um, I think that just all comes down to um, how how I Behind made the list is, I mean. and what you value. Uh, right. You value Katie's health and how he's been in and out of the lineup, and I acknowledge that, but. My, li- my my list is based on you know I, I play the one healthy game right because it, I think it gets a little complicated especially for players like AD and Kawhi mm-hmm. and I kind of want to keep it simple for me so I right. think that's kind of where me and you um have a kind of disagreement right there. Well, I, I felt like before the season started, I thought that Kawhi Leonard and Damian Lillard were going to play themselves back into the top ten. Oh, absolutely. I, absolutely! I felt like that before the season started. I think Dame has played himself back into the top ten. The fact that they brought Leonard along slowly like they did. I'm not sure he's a top 10 player yet. I think he's close to it. 
because he's been in and out of the lineup, he's been playing really well, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure he's back there just yet. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to, I'm willing to go a little bit further. I, I need to see a little bit more from him, just a little longer before I stamp Kawhi Leonard back in the top ten. I feel you. I feel you. And, and to, to the super chat right here, uh, Tony Gratsky. My, my my problem with Tatum more so is he, I think he's improved as a defender, as a playmaker. But I just feel like scoring the ball, he's great, but he's just too passive in my eyes. Way too many threes. Um, he can shoot the three, but with his size, I feel like he should get more into the post game. Um, I, and I feel like that's where he can really thrive. But he's just way too passive. In my I don't even need the Very game. passive. I don't even. Need, I don't even. I don't even feel like the post game. One second, Brian. One second, big, big, big man. But I don't even think the, the post game. I watched him get Davion Mitchell last night on his hip, and he had him about 17 feet away from the basket. And he took one dribble and raised up over him. I'm thinking to myself, this dude gets this 17 to, to 19 foot game in his game consistently. We are talking about a top three player for the next five to eight years, for sure. Un for sure. No question about it. His game is either at the long ball line or it's at the rim. There's nothing in between. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And I, I see another. I see another. Oh, sorry. Two. Two. So, so the M the MVP thing, man. My bad. So the MVP thing. Um, no, go ahead. Whoever's pushing this Joel and B for MVP nonsense, man. It's sympathy. Uh, uh, Y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, man. Get out of here, bro. Hear me? Man, what do you mean? Yo, Joel and B is the MVP. Why, why is it not? Why is it We're nonsense though, it. Lee? We're pushing nonsense. There is no nonsense. Yeah, why is it nonsense? It's not, it's not, 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 hold on, hold on, JB, I got you, bro. I got you right now. Hold on. Y'all like this video, like nonsense. this video, chat. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, yeah. like the video, like the video, nah, subscribe man. to the page. On, JB, I'm going to tell you why it's nonsense. It's, it's coming, it's, it's coming all agree. after. I, I may agree. He may hold on, JB, let him get it off, JB, JB, let him get it off. Let him get it off, JB. Nah, but you got to, you got to understand. You gotta understand. We had, we had Jokic doing what he was doing for majority of the season. Like you know what I'm saying? So like everything, everything that's going up, the Denver Nuggets, bro, as far as seeding goes, as far as they, they team, they just had good placement because you look at all of the teams that was number one. Uh New Orleans was a top three team. Uh, uh um, who else was a top three team? It was a couple of top three teams that went down and Denver stayed the course. The thing yeah. is, like the thing is with the Sixers, they had the they 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 had a terrible start to the season. And then they had to work their way back up. You do remember that. I'm pretty sure you remember that. So, Joel, Joel is an MVP candidate. I understand. But Joel is the MVP. We all know that's BS. So, Leaf, you're saying that they had the Philadelphia had to work their way up to the to, to the top they of the Eastern Conference. They had to work. Conference. Remember right. that? So the with, with them, right. So, with them working themselves up to the top of the Eastern Conference, wouldn't that be because Joel and B played the way he played? Wouldn't that have something to do with it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that would be too. But we can't forget about Harden either. Right. You know, and, and you, and said, how, it, wait, and you said it yourself. You said it yourself like, plenty of times, too. changed up the narrative. I agree with you, like, because they did, like, change up the narrative. Like, logically, what you're saying is, is sound to a degree. But what I'm saying to you is, like, all right, I mean, no player in B – Look, it's it's a narrative award, unfortunately. I'm not saying that should be, but it is. And Bede had his chances. He lost the last two years. Giannis won two. They all won off narratives. It's time for it. Joe, and Joe is really No, good. JB, we're not doing that. No, no, no. It's, it's JB, not you can't people. argue no, like that, bro. Not doing you that. can't no, argue no. like that. JB, you Because what you're making it like sound that. like, JB, is you're making it sound like it's a popularity contest, and it's not. That's not true at all. No, we're not doing that. No, no, no. Uh-uh, JB, no. No, it's not a popularity it? contest. No, it's not. So no it one is ever not. Went on a narrative before. JB, it's happened, no but you can't you can't make an before. argument. Those, for those, those, I think those things. Ever, I, I, I think those things are exceptions, right? So when Russell Westbrook won it, but, but what we can't leave out is we even uh, even with the narrative that you talk about, we can't leave out the fact that Russ did lead the league in scoring that year. He did lead the league in assists that year. So we can't leave that part out. So the, so the so the narrative part. I mean, I can appreciate the narrative does play a part in it. But the fact that I'm a baller, we can't leave that out. So the idea that Joel Embiid is the first center since Shaq 20 years ago to lead the league in scoring, and he's done it he's done it multiple times. The problem with Joel Embiid is he's been in and out the lineup. And him being in and out the lineup, they've won with him out of the lineup. That's been the detriment mean, to him. <laughs> So so, what is Joel's? How many games do you think he's gonna end up playing this year? How many games do you think he's gonna end up playing this year? Because like I, he used to be in there a lot, and he missed some games, but he didn't miss like a crazy right. amount of games this year. Hmm. He, didn't, he, didn't he, didn't. he didn't. He didn't miss a lot of right. games this year. No, he did not. So he, I mean, he, I want to know. Did not. Okay, what is Joel's case? That's what I want to know. 
I think I think Joel's place case is clear. I think I think Joel, Giannis, Jokic, all three of their cases are clear made. As long as as long as you've been watching basketball, they, they have a clear cut case. To be but in Bobby, the MVP race, what, right? what is what is Joel's case over 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 uh, Jokic over Jokic? That's that's see see the that's beauty, a different beauty, question. The the beauty of it for me, Leaf, is this: I don't have a vote. You know what I'm saying? So I could just I could just say the guys I think can win, but since I don't have a vote, I can't break it down to who I got over who. Right. I had Jokic for a while, then I had Giannis. Now I'm back to Jokic. Right now I'm stuck with Giannis. Um, I, I think right now I would say it goes Giannis, Joel, Jokic, honestly. Um, right, CT, who you got? Chill. Yo. Chill, who you got? Oh, so, so, so what was your oh, – what was, what was, what Again, was your, we're, not talk, we're not talking about the best player in the league. We're talking about the guy who's the most valuable to his Right, team, right. His I'm just talking success. MVP. Like, I'm just and like – I had Giannis to start the season, but when uh -huh. I think about what Joker has been doing with the crew that he has, right. the fact that Denver's at the top of the Western Conference – I wouldn't be surprised if he won it. I also have Yoke. I fellas, had, fellas, fellas, I fellas, fellas, fellas. You want to win it, Phil? I had Giannis winning it before the season started. I had, I had Giannis before the. Uh, I had Giannis before the season started. That's why. That's why I, I had Yoke in my first super chat on this channel. Like this was before the season, so I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Need that's to not. That's it. that's that's not a hot take, Leaf. He's, he's hey, wait. I want to ask JB a question right now. Tell me, JB. Yeah, go ahead. What is Embiid? Let's get it off because we got to keep it moving. What, what, what right, is right. Embiid's narrative over um over like this outside of narratives? What, what case does he have? Oh, over Jokic. Oh, be, be, over well, Jokic. No, over that being the, the, the first center in a long time to be the leading scorer besides Shaq. I believe Doesn't overall his uh, especially over the last. What's that? Say it again. No, no, just keep, keep going, keep going. Okay. Okay, his ability, especially in the last two games, to pick up his defensive game, block shots when it, when it's important, those are things that just Jokic can't do. Now, don't wrong. I think Jokic is nice. But I think on the I, – I was just saying the narrative is a part of it, but don't tell me wrong. You have to have really, be really, really good and really, really nice. That's the main part of it, mm -hmm. of course. So those two things mm – -hmm. I don't mean the defensive narrative. I mean literally over the last 20 games and picking up – Blocking shots at the rim, being a mm -hmm. rim protector, not he's just saying, elite. you know, he's a better defender, he's just leaving it out there. Yeah, he's been he's a leader as a rim protector. He stepped yes, it he up has. and he's shown. Yes, he has. And he's showing, mm -hmm. even though he's not saying he wants the MVP, the way he's been playing, he, he's, I mean, not that this is a part of the two, but you can tell he's trying to win the MVP a little bit, even though he's not saying it. All right, yeah. right. but he's been elite. He's been elite for a stretch of games in terms of, all right, defense, right. both sides of the ball. I understand that. Jokic has been turning up as the season is progressing. Remember, he started off with like maybe what was his numbers in the early of the season? Like 25, 9, and 9, or 20, 24, 9, and 9, or something like that. Yeah, yeah but he's been turned down up. the last what eight, eight, nine games? Eight, nine games. No, 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 no. It was a five game stretch. He's been better as of late. It was a five right. game stretch. It was a five stretch. game stretch. So, I mean, so as of late is what, a game and a half? <laughs> like the game of the half. I don't know what. I mean, but 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 JB, if we going off a of stretch, I don't I don't think I don't think that he's not good. Like he's he's worthy of MVP. I just think this year Joel Embiid should win it. But I am let, a Sixers fan. Biased. JB, let me tell you. Well, you're a Sixers fan. First and foremost. Oh, okay. Yo, 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 JB, 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 Breezy. Y'all got y'all got y'all got anything? What you got, Breezy? What's up, Breezy? Um, yeah, yeah. I think I kind of want. Hold on, hold on, JB. Hold on, JB. Thanks, right. brother. Peace out, JB. Appreciate Thanks, you stopping by. What's, what's up, Breezy? I just wanted to add to what Chillstown said earlier to P5. And we were saying something else to, I uh, think, somebody that said, said something about the Clippers and how they are champions on paper. Yeah. And I want to say, as Nets fans, we feel the same way. We were champions on paper. You yeah, couldn't right. tell us that roster wasn't going to take us so away. And just kind of circling back around to what y'all were just discussing, <laughs> you got to account health. Damn right. To you gotta account yeah, health. Right, you have to account health to who gets what the award or whatever because that's the significance of the players actually playing or right. them just on paper. Look yeah. at Ben Simmons, what he doing to us? He he, not, he didn't even say sorry. He he, he just doing whatever he want to do. So yeah. I, I'm gonna just yeah. step back because I don't want to go on a rant. I just wanted to say yeah. I, I love chilling with chill. I appreciate the panel. Salute to the channel. Yeah. And yeah, we we hurting right now, man. We, but wow. we be back. We'll be back. Yeah, right on. Right on. I'll see. Right. We're gonna talk about that later. How's Brooklyn? We're gonna talk about that later, Breeze. All right, fellas, look, so let me, we, me, me and Chill, we got to keep it moving. We got to get to some more super chats. 
We got a couple more things to talk about. If y'all got anything easy, else, if y'all got if y'all got anything else, y'all got any ruckus, y'all got Chill, to stop for ducking the next me, episode. man. I, you went on yesterday, bro. I didn't even see your notification. Uh, ducking you? What do you uh, mean uh, ducking you? All you got to do uh, light it up, B. You know where to find me at. I'm not hard to find. In uh, fact, uh, you got uh, me. I'm, you, I'm, I'm you, right you here. Ran. You ran. I'm right I here. I don't, ever, of all the people that I don't run from, I, I don't <laughs> run from anybody. But if I was if, if I wasn't running from nobody, I definitely wouldn't run from you. There's no right. reason for me to run from you. Right. Are that you that kidding me? No reason to run from you. That that. All right, I'll see you then. Yo, yo what's right, up, Tyler? Right, no, hold, hold on, P5, hold on. Oh. Yo, Tyler, man, what's, what's good, man? We get you up here. You got you, you got something real quick? Hey, P5, I got I got I got to let you go. Stay in those books, brother. And stay in shape. Make you working. For sure. Yes, sir. Good to talk to you, brother. No doubt. Tyler, what's up, bro? Sorry, sorry to get you up so late. I am unfortunately gonna have to rush you in and out, but you know what I'm saying? Get, get it off. What you got? You're you. muted, you're muted, brother. Yeah, hey, now you hot. All right, now what's, you hot. what's going on, Tyler? What's up? Uh first I wanted to say, man, when is I mean, Clippers fans are just they're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> they're the I mean, is there they worse than Nick fans. They're not worse than Nick fans, Tyler. They not. They not worse than Nick fans. I promise you that. They're oh not. yeah, 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 yeah. You they're not. That's right, but like I'm just saying, like it's just like man, the the Clippers are the uh, NFL equivalent to the Cowboys. No, Ooh, that's the Knicks. Right. That's the Knicks. No the, way. The, no they way. They just never. Can, they never can do it. No matter. Yo, the, 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 the Clippers are the, the Clippers are Raiders fans. But but yes, I can get with that, Ox. Huh? <laughs> but um I okay so you say that Kobe from 2002 and on but we're just going to skip over the whole 2001 playoffs when he was the best player in the west He was the best player in the west Yes even are you sure are, are you sure about that 100% he went he went 29 5 and 5 putting up similar putting up similar similar mm -hmm. numbers yep. to the most dominant player that ever lived and he averaged 30 in every Western Conference playoff that he was in. And Shaq averaged, I think, 29. And, yeah. And I think he averaged 30 against uh, against Sacramento in, in, in the Western Conference. Yeah, he and, was, he called, and, he's a, and he was a I think Shaq, and he's the one I think that Shaq went, I think Shaq went 35 in that series against Yeah, Sacramento. like against the Sacramento Kings. Yeah, went, Shaq went, um, yeah, Shaq went 40, 35 against them. Shaq went like 35 and 13 against them. Yeah, in and, and game four, he was uh, – So Kobe like wasn't the best So Kobe wasn't the best player. He wasn't. That, that's not true. Even Shaq said it. Player. Shaq was he's, on an interview and he was like, yes, he's he the best just, player. He was showing love. Right See, that's he was all he was doing. Love. So when you got so when you got a dude that's running – you got a dude that you're running with, right? So, so we got a playoff series. For example, the Sacramento Kings series. You got a dude that – that the first two games of the series, he goes 40 and 20. Are you going to sit here and tell me that if we got that going on right now, we got a dude going 40 and 20, a dude who finished second in league, second in league MVP votes, goes 40 and 20 in the in the second round of, a, of, of the conference semifinals, even after the, the previous round when they played against Portland, I think he went 27 and 13 against them, and to his production to go up, you're going to say that this dude that he running with is still the best player, even though this dude said, okay, He's a he's he, he's the best player right now. Is it fair to say that Shaq was just showing him love? Is that not fair? No, because um he went he went forty eight with twelve rebounds to um actually to, was six, to actually knock was, out the Kings and then he went into the Western Conference. Then he went into the Western Conference Finals and dropped forty five on the Twin Towers when they were shutting Shaq down. They never shut Shaq down. That's they not true. They, Shaq, no, they did not. Twenty two points that that series. They were on. He did him. not average twenty two a game that series. He, he didn't know. He didn't average. Three. He didn't average. Right. But the he might have had. He, he might have had. He might have had one of those games. But I don't. I, I think he was much more productive in that series than, than than you give him credit for. And add that to the fact that, with that being said, Kobe was doing his job. He wasn't carrying. Shaquille O'Neal, just like Shaq, oh, yeah, of course, wasn't, of course. Shaq wasn't carrying him. They both were doing their job. And there was a there was a conversation about how good Kobe Bryant was. He didn't become, we didn't start talking about him like that. For him to have that playoff run, what he had in 2001, that was phenomenal. But we didn't start talking about him with the best players in the league until after what they did in 2002. That's when the conversation got serious about, yo, this dude might be the best player in the league. He okay. might be the he, he might be the best player in the league. That's when it got serious. We started to have a conversation a year before that. That's a fact. But after what they did when they won it the third straight year and what Bryant had done, we started to have a conversation that yo, Shaq ain't just running with a good player or even a great player. He might be running with the best player in the league. Okay, we started and, to have that conversation. And shouldn't and I mean, shouldn't have Kobe have gotten, I mean, MVP, he should have got MVP in 2006, 2007, 2008. 
2009 and 10. What are you basing that on? I'm basing that off of him being definitely the most valuable player in the league in 2006 and 2007 when he mm -hmm. averaged 35, 36 points in 2006 and mm -hmm. 34 in 2007. And he was playing with guys like Smush Parker and Kwame mm -hmm. Brown. Right. So he got that team to the playoffs. And, mm -hmm. yes, we all know what he did. But, right. I mean – other this is the regular season. We just talked about the regular season. Yeah, I'm just regular season. Yeah, we just talked about the regular season. I'm so 2006, 2007, mm -hmm. 2008, he did get mm -hmm. the MVP. He did. But 2009, the seventh ring team in the in um in the West that made it to the playoffs was a 50 plus win team. So he was he was going to get some juggernauts. Yes, he was. And so mm -hmm. I believe that he should have got MVP all three of those years. Yeah. And 2010, I'll give it to LeBron. LeBron was amazing that year. I saw him yep. do his thing, but. I just believe that when you when you put Kobe at twelve, I mean that's I don't have him at twelve. I don't, I don't have him at twelve. I got him at eleven. Oh, uh, eleven. I mean, mm -hmm. just out of the top ten, you cannot tell me that you would rather a, you would rather design a team around. Yes, uh, I would. Larry Bird I would, I, or, yes, I or would. Magic Johnson. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. And I'm telling you that right now. Absolutely. I build, yeah, I'm building my unit around Hakeem Olajuwon before Kobe Bryant. I'm building my unit around Magic Johnson before I'm building my unit around Kobe Bryant. I'm building my unit around Larry Bird. Before, earlier, Tyler? I'm building my unit around Larry Bird before I build it around Kobe Bryant. So in 2006, you're basing, you're basing it on points. I can appreciate that. Even though James averaged 31 a game that year. Not only did he average 31 a game that year, I think he was the only player in the league to go 37 and 7 that year, yeah, which, yeah, would explain yeah. why, which would explain why his, to explain why he finished second in the league in MVP votes. Not only did he go 37-7, and seven, his team finished in second place in the Eastern Conference. Now, I can appreciate the logic of him being in a, in a quote-unquote weaker conference, which, by the way, I got a question for you. And I was, I, I'm, since you're a Kobe guy, I, I'm very interested to hear how you feel about this. A lot of people talk about how weak the Eastern Conference was at that time. Yeah. Now, I remember the Eastern Conference being a juggernaut in the 90s with the Bulls, with the Knicks, with the Indiana yeah. Pacers. Is it fair or am I out of line to say that there were players who would rather deal with those guys than have to deal with James in order to get to the finals? That's why they stayed away from the East? That is fair. It's fair. That's, I, 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 that's, 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 just, fair that's just a question. Because he was, I mean, when it came to the East, even though it was weak, he was a lone juggernaut in that Eastern Conference. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, pe I mean, yes, people didn't want, people didn't want to face him. But when it comes down to Kobe, we seen Kobe. Okay, we saw him with Shaq, the most dominant player ever. But mm -hmm. then we saw him with – when it comes to Kobe, all you really need to give Kobe is role players and a decent big man, and he's taking you to championships because we've mm -hmm. seen that. He, he, he's the really the lone reason why Paul Gasol got his jersey number retired and is going to the Hall of Fame. So he also makes p players better around him mm -hmm. and, and like, extends them to one of the mm -hmm. – being some of the best ever and yeah. make them Hall of Famers. Right. So when it comes down to, like, people um, having Kobe and surrounding him with pieces, you really just have to surround Kobe with decent pieces that mm -hmm. know their role, and Kobe's taking you to back-to-back -to -back finals. So is it fair to say that Pau Gasol also elevated Bryant's game as well? Oh, yeah, because of course, if you, yeah. Because I, I don't, I don't, what I don't want to do is I don't want to – I don't want to – minimize Pau Gasol as being a decent player. I mean, I, I'd like to think that he was an elite big man, and not only was he an elite big man, I think he was the difference in them winning the NBA championship. Yeah, when, when, I, I, say, when, when I say decent player, I just mean, like, to the all-time, like, to, like, players now and then, like, to the greats. Like, he's a decent player that would have got there, maybe, but right. Kobe elevated him to that spot, and right. you can't compare him to, like, Having a Shaq or having a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't Malone good. He wasn't Shaq good. It's just, just, just from the four spot alone, right? Yeah. I don't think he was Malone good. I don't think he was Duncan good. However, I'd like to think that he was a little bit better than a lot of people give him credit for. In fact, I think he was the difference in him pushing oh. them over the. I think he was the difference in pushing that group over the top. And, and he I had think a that we, shot. not only did he have a three point shot, I don't think that we give enough credit to. If you look at that championship unit, like vets like Derek Fisher, right? We don't give enough credit to how good Lamar Odom was. And not only how good Lamar Odom was, the fact that him and Kobe Bryant ran together for as long as they did. When you got a guy that you're running with for that long, him, Derek Fisher, uh, Lamar Odom, when you're running with guys that long, you build, you, 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 you build a camaraderie and you build a chemistry with these guys that once you get somebody like a Gasso, this guy is basically the salt. We already got the plate. We already got the meal. This guy is the salt. He's the seasoning that pushes this meal over the top. So I don't want to discount 
how good those teams were. Because let's make sure we clear. I mean, the year Kobe won the league MVP, and not 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 won the league MVP. The year after that, when they won the NBA championship in two thousand nine, when they get Pau Gasol in the middle of the season, I mean that team won sixty five games. They weren't a bad team. That was an awesome team. Yeah, that was a damn good team that he was on. Right. So when I think about how good he was, and again, I want to rem- I want to make sure that we're clear. Kobe Bryant, when he retires in twenty sixteen, ESPN comes out with a top one hundred list all time. They got Bryant at 12. I had him at 11. They come back. I believe it was just this year that just passed in 2022. They come back with their top 75 list. They got Bryant at 10. I got him at 11. So, I mean, would, would it, would it, like I said, I'm down to have a conversation about this dude being anywhere between seven and 11. I'm in anything past 11. I'm not trying to hear you. I'm not listening to you. I will not talk to you. Just like I'm not trying to hear you tell me he's the second or the third best player ever. I'm not trying to hear that. No. Because because your even your mm-hmm. criteria, you said trans you said transcendent. Yeah. You said like all these things. Yep. You got the mamba mentality. That's a transcendent thing. Okay. Um I can't remember your other criteria. So 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 game your game is timeless. His game was timeless. Did you dominate? He absolutely did that. Did you win? He did that. Four, it, is your game transcendent? Five, social impact. I'll, in this particular situation, what I don't want to do is I don't want to I don't want to get into the social thing because again, at that time, everybody hated him. They didn't even know what was going on, and that bothered me because yeah. we didn't even know what was going on with this dude, and everybody hated him, and everybody had a really difficult time with him. But when I think about transcendent, I'm talking about a dude who, and I'm sorry to tell you this, but he was a carbon copy of the other dude, and he wasn't as good as the other dude. So yeah, how, I, how how transcendent was his game? I believe it was transcendent because they put basically a name to what Jordan already had, and Kobe kind of took it a step further. Now he was he was Jordan had a better had better pieces around him and more consistent pieces around him, and was in a different position than Kobe was. And Kobe, you can give Kobe a little bit of blame for pushing Shaq out because he would have got more rings. But at the same time, that was like two different situations. And I actually believe that uh, Kobe was actually better than Jordan. But that Jordan had this as well. And Jordan didn't have to go through all the things that Kobe Bryant went through. Now, like when it comes down to you can say that he went to uh, baseball, then comes back and wins three straight. You right. know, I got to give it to Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Ten straight. 10 scoring champions and everything like that. But when it comes to shot, when it comes to um, having the free throw, having a post game, having footwork, having that clutch mentality, um, just being able to do everything on the court that he Mm -hmm. was able to do, it is really disingenuous to even put him past even top, like top five because of just everything he was able to do. with. My man, my man, my man, man. see, see. And one, one more some, thing, um, and then you got the social impact. Dwayne Wade, even himself, said that he didn't even feel like he wanted to play anymore when Kobe Bryant retired because Kobe Bryant was the person that he was chasing. Then you got people like Jason Tatum that looked up to Kobe so much and mm-hmm. basically used Kobe's game and then went to the Western Conference Finals by mm-hmm. Kobe coaching them. Then you got people like Kyrie Irving that mm-hmm. has the best handles and footwork almost mm-hmm. in the game, and he yeah. used that from Kobe Bryant. Sure. So you got some of the top players in this league right now. And then who grew got- up watching him, who, who grew up watching him, right? Who yeah. grew up watching him and he, and he mentored them. That stuff matters. No question about that. That, so like, that, so, so you that got, absolutely so you matters. you got all the criteria for him right. even more than other players. Right. But with that being said, with that all being said, the guys that I have in front of him, the stuff that they did meets the same criteria. And not only does it meet the same criteria, the separator is the other stuff that they did. So, for example, there is no record in the NBA, no record in the NBA that doesn't have Wilt Chamberlain's name attached to it. Or he either holds it or he held it at one point. To this day, Wilt retired 50 years ago, and we're still talking about him to this day, right? So a guy like Bill Russell, who averaged 20 and 20 in the playoffs, in the playoffs for four, for almost four straight years, Chamberlain is the only other guy who can say he did that. Can't nobody else say that they did that. The point guard spot was revolutionized by Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson was supposed to play on the box. He was not supposed to be a a lead guard. Not only was he a lead guard, he revolutionized the game. Larry Bird also is another guy who was somewhat of a point forward, right? Not only was he a point forward, his all-around game and how awesome he was as a player. we We actually had to look past 
can't believe I'm saying this, but we actually had to look past the fact of how Larry Bird looked. Like people didn't even bring that up, yeah. right? People didn't even bring that up. He was just a baller. That's all he was. he was. Tim Duncan, in terms of how consistent he was and his his ability to do it for as long as he did it and how well he did it, right? Hakeem Olajuwon, I think he's the best defensive player in NBA history, and I don't think it's a, for for me. I don't I don't think it's a question. And like I said, when you're talking about a championship team and being the best player on a championship team, the separator is when you do it three years in a row. And when Shaq did that, I mean. I don't think that there's a I don't think that there's a question. So again, if we're gonna have a conversation about Kobe being seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, I got no problem. But I can't get legit logic with him being the second best player in the seventy five year history of the NBA. No, I can't. Okay, I'll give you that. Last thing I want to say is, like, all most of those players had better pieces around them. Like Magic played with Kareem, and you would say Kareem is better than Shaq, and then Kareem played with Magic, and so most of those players had better, like, pieces around him. I mean, Larry Bird had Kevin McHale and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, like, Kobe did play with amazing players. But yeah. most of these players that you say are superstar players played with another player that was better than Kobe people that he played with. Right. So, I mean, and then you got to look at competition mm -hmm. as well. And they, they had a tough competition as well. But sure. having another top five player around them definitely helped their game. So, right. like, when it comes down to all the intangibles, I mean, I have to say, and then when you go to um, Tim Duncan, Tim Duncan always got kicked out of the playoffs by Kobe Bean Bryant before with Shaq and not after always. Shaq. Not, because, not I mean, uh, Kobe is 7-0 uh, and oh in the Western Conference Finals. He's undefeated. Mm -hmm. When it comes mm -hmm. to the Western Conference Finals, that's his. That's, that's, his that's not true. That's not true. He got he, They got swept in the finals in 98 against Utah. I mean, I said Western Conference Finals. Yeah, swept, they got swept against Utah in 1998. Swept out the playoffs in the Western Conference Finals. In that was in the Western Conference because he's 7-0. Against, uh, against Utah in 1998, the Utah Mocked Jazz them mocked them out the playoffs 4-0. I'm in fact, not, not 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 only did he get swept in '98, he got swept in '99 in the semifinals. So two years in a row, he was swept out of the playoffs. Yeah, you don't got you don't got you don't got to look it up, Tyler. You heard it you heard it here first. Just but if you want to fact, oh if you want to fact check me, I got no yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tyler, it's, it, it's good, good, good discussion. This is this is good stuff right here. Absolutely, right. brother. I appreciate all right. it. All right. I, it, I, Tyler, it, it was a pleasure to have you up here, man. All right, appreciate um, you. Man. Every, every oh, man. time, every Wednesday, man, tap in. Come look, for the, look, for, look for the link in the chat. Come right, through. Gotcha, Absolutely, gotcha, thank brother. No All doubt. Right, no doubt. See you next time. It's it's it, the the thing, Ox is is when when I talk to people like Tyler, like we can have a conversation about this, right? This is something that 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 we can talk about, as opposed to you coming up here and you spewing a lot of nonsense. Like he was right. giving legit logic, right? Yeah. He was, and and I was rebutting that logic with my own logic. So we can have a conversation. I can't really talk to nobody to give me legit logic that this dude is the second best player of all time. Like, nah, uh-uh. Yeah. A lot, a lot of times it's, it's emotionally fueled. But Tyler, yeah. Tyler, Tyler has some good, some good backing behind him. But uh, I think it's about time we run through these super chats real quick. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get it on. Um, There we go. Drink more water. Any reason why the top 10 rebounders are foreign? Because that's the way the game is going. The game is 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 becoming more and more dominated by foreigners. And the foreigners, what they have done is they've capitalized on their ability to be fundamentally sound. So they do block out, right? Not only do they block out, they know how to rebound. They know how to they know footwork. And they bring more to the game fundamentally than other guys do. So yeah. Uh, Relic came back. We need to talk about Anthony Davis. How do you guys feel about him right now? His motor has been lacking in these recent games. I mean, he's 26 and 12, and, and I think the last 10 games, I mean, don't get me wrong, against Orlando, he wasn't good. In Dallas, he was, yeah. but I think the, the, the other eight previous games, he was, I think he was like 30 and 15, something like that. Now, this Laker team is going to go as far as Anthony Davis takes them. It's just that simple. Now, as good as James is, as good as Vanderbilt, those guys, those Vanderbilt, Beasley, those guys are rotation guys. This team is going to go as far as Anthony Davis's health mm. takes them, and I'm not sure if he's going to hold up. That's the difference. Yeah, that's always a that's always a for question. Yep. Uh, Rock tapped in and said, "Oh, gee, what are your favorite LeBron performances?" I personally would probably go Game Five against the Pistons in 07. That was legendary. Game five was legendary. Uh, game six against Boston. 
in the Boston Garden. We went 45 and 15. That was fantastic. Um, let's see. Game seven in the NBA Finals in 2013 against San Antonio. He was awesome in that game. Um, let's see. Game seven against Boston in, in, in Boston in 2018. He was fantastic in that game. Those, those, those are just a few of my favorite performances from the game. Uh, like you said, game five in, in the Eastern Conference uh, Finals against Detroit um, early, in, early in his career. No doubt about that. So LeBron, LeBron has so many legendary performances. Yeah, he has. Those were great games. Yeah, he has. Um, Alex Pickering tapped in and said, Fluin was right about trading AD, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, he was what talking he about what well, he was talking about when uh when 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 AD was playing great, that was the best time to get the best value for him. And a lot of people were going, No, just keep rolling with it. And Tone Tone made it clear that yo, we need to move off this dude and we need to move off him now. So yeah. uh he might have been right about that. Yeah, he was adamant about that. Mm-hmm. He was definitely serious. Um, got some more. Let's keep it going. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lonnie Williams tapped back in and said, Chill, what are the Nets doing to Cam Thomas? It's either a DNP or like 10 minutes. He was balling before the trade. Now they treat him like garbage. They treat Lenny, him like hot, hot garbage. What's going Lenny, on over there? Lenny, Lenny it, 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 it seems like... It just isn't working. I mean, the last eight games, he's averaging seven minutes with three DMPs, three DMPs, right? He's averaging seven minutes a game. That's it. And I'm trying to figure out what Jock Vaughn's plan is with him. Is it he just doesn't fit your system? Because I think that he's going to get traded come draft night. I think that they move. I think they move off of him in the offseason because I just think that he could help somebody. I do, and I think he's wasting away in Brooklyn. No question in my mind. I think he's wasting away in Brooklyn. And I think yeah. he could absolutely help somebody. I think he gets traded on draft night. I do. Okay. I hope so because he, yeah. need, he needs to get some time. He needs to get yeah. on that court. Angie Carr. Of course, uh, Angie Carr tapped in and said, y'all need to get Ron a wrap-it-up box for the Super Chats. People <laughs> spend their hard-earned earned money to be heard. Keep up the great work, though, guys. We, we, we on him, Angie. We, we we on him. Absolutely, Angie. We on him. We we we. We, we we put the foot to Ron. Let's go, Ron. Wrap it up. Come on, man. Yeah, you you know, Angie. I'm actually about to see Ron in about an hour. If you if you mm-hmm. if you want me to rough him up a little bit, do you that. Know, let me know. I'll take I'll take care of my hey, Angie Carr. If you if you got a super chat that Ron ain't read, you hit me up and I'll get your money back. Mm-hmm. Um, Shamar Trusty. Who do you think Brad Bill could help if he were to find a new home? Via yeah. trade during off season slash in season. I tell you what, man, I really liked, and I don't know if this would work simply because of the money, but I loved Brad Beal in Denver. I thought that he would be awesome for them. Him and Jamal Murray in the backcourt. I thought that 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 tandem would be fantastic. So I don't know if that I don't know if that would work in terms of money because again, this is a money. If you don't understand contracts in the NBA, you can't understand the game. But mm-hmm. I, I, I do like him in Denver. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's going to work, but I, I really like him in Denver. Yeah, that that would actually be nice. I, I, yeah. I would love to see Bradley Bill win. Uh, Christopher D tapped back in and said, "Is Butler a top five Heat of all time mm-hmm. outside of Wade, LeBron, Shaq, and Alonzo? Who could you argue? To be honest, I get nasty." And tell you Butler over Shaq. I mean, as, as, as a Heat. No. Now remember, we're not but talking about we're not talking about the best player. We're talking about the best player to play for the Miami Heat. So, so, so are we are we talking about while they were playing for the Heat or just in that's general? It. That's it. Not not yeah. in general. We're just talking about them playing for the Miami Heat. Jimmy so is, Sha- is Shaq top five? His jersey retired in Miami. Yes, his jersey absolutely. Oh. Shaq changed oh, yeah, the yeah. Shaq changed the cult. Shaq changed the culture in Miami. Okay. Right before before Shaq, I mean the Miami Heat were a good team, but Shaq changed the culture. But when you're talking about a guy who is a Miami Heat, I mean you, Udonis Haslam is a top five Heat. I think he's all time. I think he's all time leading rebounder. Yeah. Like the most games played. Right. Where's uh, Where's Tim Hardaway? 
Tim Hardaway is uh, Tim Hardaway is another guy who's who, who who you can have a conversation about. Glenn Rice is another guy who you can oh, have a yeah. conversation about. Oh, so yeah, to good. say that Jimmy Butler over over the course of let's see three years is a top five Heat, I don't mm-hmm. think so. I'm not I'm not gonna go that far. Yeah. How was uh how how would you say Eddie Jones was with Miami? Eddie Jones was a complimentary player, and I'm mm-hmm. a big Eddie Jones fan. I'm I'm yeah. a huge Eddie Jones fan. Eddie Eddie was the dude who got. He was the one who got cursed. And what I mean when I say cursed, Big Ox, is he gets traded from the Lakers in 98. Yeah. In the 99 season, 99-2000 season, they end up winning the NBA championship. He gets traded in 05. The next year, the Miami Heat win the NBA championship. So yeah. I can't really I can't really <laughs> put my finger on it with Eddie Jones, but he was a complimentary player. Eddie Jones was awesome. I love Eddie Jones' game. Man, you Big put Eddie it Jones. that way, man. That's crazy. I never yeah. thought about it that way. Got mm-hmm. it for bad for Eddie. He was great. Jay the activist, y'all picks are just vibes and reputation. No, they're not, yeah, Jay. Yeah, uh-uh. that, that, not, not only are our picks not vibes and reputation. If I remember yesterday, this is the same dude on he said something, he said something wild on the panel yesterday. He sent in a super chat and it was wild as hell. I, I, I forgot yeah. what it was, man. He said something wild. So I'm Jay the activist. Yeah, he, he said something wild yesterday. Real wild. Yeah, I, I might have missed it. I was in and out yesterday. I, I was yeah. I was actually I was actually yeah. at, the, at the shop. He so. said something wild. Those activist people, what they do is they think that, you know, your truth is the only truth. No, it's mm-hmm. not, my man. I know yeah. how to tell the truth, too. You ain't the only one. And I know how to say what's on my mind, too. You ain't the only one. So. Reminder. Let's see. A.B., most disappointed power forward, Carl Malone. Yeah. Did, the hashtag the, didn't win. Yeah, really? The 13th pick? In the, in the 13th pick to go to Utah where nobody didn't care about Utah. Nobody cared about what was going on in Utah. The dude was first team all NBA for 11 straight years. Duncan is the only other guy who could say that at the power forward spot. 11 straight years. There's, there's, there's nobody else who could say that. Now, if you're only talking about winning, I mean, he did get there. He did get there. But the fact that he was di- the most disappointing, you didn't have those expectations on him when he showed up in Utah. So don't tell me that he was dis- the most disappointing. No, because he produced. That's nonsense. There's a statue of him outside the arena. Usist? Uh, Usist? I don't know. Uh, only, only, only Bron had his downplay Shaq to put Kobe over Bron. Ticket, Elder, etc. Shaq was clearly better. I felt like it was. I just have a difficult time with the logic that you know, Kobe carried him, and that's not true, Ox. I mean, he did his job just like Shaq was doing his job. Now, when it got later on, like in, in 2004 when Shaq started to break down, then it became something different. But up until then, he wasn't carrying them, just like Kobe wasn't carrying Shaq. They both were doing their job. Um, I think if, if we have to break it down, if we have to do the thing like, oh, who carried who, which we don't have to do that, you know, we right. don't got to do that. But if we do, I think Shaq carried like, I mean, come on, like, Shaq, Shaq Carey. No disrespect. Angie Carr, once again, came in with the super chat. Thoughts on Kyrie being angry and FaceTiming Kobe after winning the chip in 2016. People are saying he was mad he didn't win finals MVP. What y'all think? No, I don't know if he, he was the finals MVP. I mean, don't get me wrong. He was... He was instrumental in that series, but James, I thought, was the most valuable player in that series. I thought that he, from what from what he brought to that unit overall, I definitely thought that he was more valuable in that series. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think so. Like I, I mean, like you said, Kyrie played amazing. Kyrie yeah, played yeah. great. He was awesome in that series. No if, if we got to, we got to give it to one person, his Bron. Uh, Ryan Mack, can I have Ox and Chill build a team? Ox build around Kobe and have Chill build around either Bird or Magic. I'm trying to see something. Uh, you want to do that real quick? Let's do it real quick. Who so, you, want? you want Bird or Magic? I'm going with the lead guard in Magic. Okay, so mm-hmm. I'll, go, I'll go with Kobe. Yep. You go Magic. You yep. pick first. I'll go second. We'll go back and forth. So the first guy I want to go with is I want to go with a five man. So I'm going to go with Jabal. Jabbar, okay. Mm-hmm. Kobe, want to want to get a point guard. I'm gonna go with Jason Kidd. Okay, so you want to go with Jason Kidd? Then I'm gonna get a then I'm gonna get a shooting guard because I need somebody to score at the at the two guards. So I'm gonna go with Jordan. Okay, 
Okay, so you got jo damn Jordan, Magic, Jafar. Okay, I got J Kid, Kobe. Mm -hmm. Then at the three, I'll go with I'll go with Bron. Bron is gonna go with Bron. Okay, I like that. And what I'm gonna counter your Bron with is I'm gonna counter your Bron with Scottie Pippen. Scottie Pippen, that's fair. Okay, mm -hmm. Bron. So at the power forward, I'm gonna go Kevin Garnett. I can I love Kevin Garnett at the four spot, but I love Tim Duncan a little bit more. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So at my at my five, you got I'm gonna go Shaq. Yes, so so you got uh, Jason Kidd at the one, Kobe mm -hmm. at the two, Braun at the three, Garnett at the four, and Diesel at the five. Mm. Yeah. That, that's that, that's a that's a five to be dealt with. Meanwhile, I got Magic at the one, Jay at the two, Scotty at the three. I got Duncan at the four, and Jabbar at the five. Yeah, that's me. That's me. <laughs> that's me. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to see either one of those squads. That's me. Uh, yeah. Let's get back to it. Actually. Yeah. Ryan Mack, you came with another one, said we skipped about that previous chat. We can move on. Ryan Mack, we will never move on without answering your super chat. Don't worry about it, brother. We got no, you. We will not do that to you, brother. We won't. Um, Mr. Facts Over Feelings. I like that name. Keep that going. Mm -hmm. um, the Kobe sexuality is getting crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's, uh, it's... It gets there sometimes, y'all. But it gets it does, there for everybody. Yo. It gets it there does. for everybody. It does. K KD, Jordan, Bron, you know, they all got it. Uh greatest. If Kobe is a carbon copy of Jordan, where did he get his 360 dunk, three-point shooting, crossover, and his left hand shot handles? Please answer that, Chill. Oh, that's simple. He got it from Jay. He got all of that <laughs> stuff from Jay. What are you talking about? Jay could cross over, but he enhanced it. He added his he added Jay's cross because Jay had to write the left crossover. Yes, he did. But he added that crossover with what Allen Iverson did, right? Not only did he add what Allen Iverson did, he also added in, in, in terms of his shot. His shot was exactly like Jay. His box work was exactly like Joe, was exactly like Jordan. All of mm -hmm. that stuff, his three point, his entire game was constructed through Jordan. He bit Jordan's entire style. He added some other guys' game into it, but he was the prototype. His his game was constructed off of Jordan, yeah. and if you don't think that, then you wasn't around when Jordan played. Yeah, or you was under a rock. That's what you were. Alex Pickering, chill. Thoughts about how today's fundamentals are taught. Kobe didn't have nice things to say about AAU basketball. Well, I posed the question, Alex, a, a while ago. That, and I mean, I don't know if Ox heard it, but I posed the question a, a couple of months ago where I asked, you know, how many guys know how to actually play basketball mm -hmm. right how many, how many guys know how to play the game because there's a difference between getting out in transition and you know taking the ball to the basket there's a difference between that and knowing how to slip a screen right knowing how to knowing footwork in order to block out right knowing how to hit a guy on a back screen and then pop to the ball because you're going to be the open guy because the guy you're screening what he's going to do is he's going to help that means that you're going to be the open guy how to run off of, how to run off the screen right how to how to handle the basketball and keep the basketball away from people a two hand pass stuff like that these are the fundamentals that a lot of these guys that I don't think they know because they don't study the game a lot of these guys just show up now Ox, I wasn't good enough to just show up mm -hmm. I wasn't that good I had to work on my game in order to become better which right, would explain right. why I played as far as I played because I wasn't that good. Yeah. I wasn't as good enough. I wasn't good enough just to show up. I wasn't that good. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, and it take it's, it takes people. You know, you, you got to know yourself to know those type of things. Some people are right. are some people are blinded by that AAU uh, AAU the 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 culture of AAU. The coach is just yeah. lying to kids so their parents can you know it's, until you get to the level where you're good enough to play for you know uh, sponsor teams. But right. the, the kid, the, 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 we got these AAU coaches that are out here. I, I call it extortion. They're, they're extorting parents because they're lying to them, saying, oh, your kid's this good, that mm -hmm. good. He plays with me. He's going D1. You never have to pay for college, this or that. And it's just like, you know, you need to, instead of spending that money, get your get your kid out there, get, you know, get those individual skills together. Get his skill yeah. set up. And get away um, from that dude that's selling you broken dreams. Yeah, that's dangerous. It's dangerous. It is. Um, Angie Carr, not for me, Ox. It's for the other guys in the chat. Angie, I got your back. Don't worry about it. Uh, greatest. Kobe changed NBA. Drafted out no, of high school. Didn't. Youngest didn't. player in history. All-star by year two. Champion mm -hmm. by age 21. Kobe yep. made it possible for LeBron, du Dwight, Amari, etc. Just so you know, greatest. Kobe Bryant ain't the first dude to 
come out of high school and go right to the pros. Just so you know, Kevin Garnett did it before him. And not only did Kevin Garnett do it before him, Kevin Garnett was an all-star in year two, too. Just so you know, he was not the Kobe Bryant is not the only one to do that. So yeah, that's a fact. Kobe, Kobe did some things, but you yes, know, he, he did. And I don't want to discount that, but big ass. I do not want to discount that. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to over exaggerate who he was, neither. No. Yeah. Who are the lockdowns in the league currently? I'm pretty sure it's talking about lockdown defenders. I think Drew Holiday is one of those guys. I think Lou Dort gives guys a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. uh, Mikael Bridges gives guys trouble. I want to say Marcus Smart, but he does the extracurricular activity, and it kind yeah. of throws me off, man. It does. It throws me. It throws <clears> me a loop where I can't really see yeah. him being the, the the defender that I think he is because he does a lot of extracurricular stuff to throw me off. So yeah. those are the guys that I think about off the top of my head: Lou Dort, uh, Mikael Bridges, uh, Drew Holiday, guys like that. Yeah, Davion will be on that list soon. Yeah, he will. Uh, Rich Gang came with the super chat. Mike said he got his game from David Thompson. How great David Thompson could have been if he ain't have those drug issues. He was awesome. He was absolutely awesome. Jordan said, I mean, Mike David Thompson introduced Jordan into the Hall of Fame. Jordan said that was his guy growing up. He loved David Thompson. That was his main guy. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, y'all value that sobriety, man. It's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. How would Chris Mullen do in today's game? That came from oh, Rollo555. Five, five, five. Man, Mully, Mully would be awesome in today's game. Long ball shooter, great in transition. Chris Mullen can handle the basketball. He was money from the stripe. He's one of the better offensive players in the game. I'm trying to think of an offensive player to, in today's game. Bird's game, not Bird, I'm sorry. Chris Mullen's game from the, from the late, from the mid 80s to the 90s translates to today's game. Considering how wide open it is, Mullen would be awesome in today. He would be an all star. No question yeah. about it, he would be an all-star. I was I'm, I'm always been big on Chris Mullen. I, I love Chris mm -hmm. Mullen's game. Well, that's the yeah, I believe that's the end of the super chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did. We had a couple of things we wanted to get to, but it looks like we're not gonna have time today. But you know, we'll be right back here next Wednesday, five Eastern, two, two Pacific. Y'all make mm -hmm. sure to tap in. Any last words, Chip? Yo, you know me and Big Ox, you know how we do it. We do it to the we do it to the fullest. So you know where to find us at. This is where we're gonna be. But until then, take it light. We take it. Ooh, real quick, chill. Uh -oh. Start bench cut. Defense at their peaks. Cole Bron MJ. Cole Bron MJ. Um, I think James is a I think James is the best defensive player of all three of these of all three of these guys. So I'm starting uh James. I'm cutting, I'm I'm starting James, I'm benching Jay, and I'm cutting Brian. Another one real quick from Greatest. KG was year three, and I said first guard out of high school. You so emotional, you can't focus. I'm not, oh, that's Chill not, screaming that's like not true. Chill. Okay, first, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> let me make sure I'm, I'm let me make sure I'm clear. Let me make sure I'm clear. Kevin Garnett was drafted in 1995. Is that correct? Kevin Garnett was drafted in 1995. The NBA All-Star game was in Cleveland in 1997, which is the 96-97 season, which is the next season. That's year two for Kevin Garnett. That's year. That's not year three, right? Year mm -hmm. three would be in New York, which was in 1998. <laughs> you talk about being emotional. We're not talking about emotions here, my man. We're talking about facts. That's not emotion. That is fact. And the reason why I know that is because Gary Payton said, with Sean Kemp standing right here, that with Kevin Garnett, he's 20 and he's going on 21. Yeah, that was in 1997, year two for Kevin Garnett. So the idea of changing the game you're, you're talking about guy first guard drafted out of high school. He's the him being drafted out of high school. There's a guy who did that before him, and that's Kevin Garnett. The whole guard thing, that's not I mean, what you're doing is you're trying to do that to fit your narrative. So mm -hmm. I'm good. S and save the emotional nonsense. That's yeah. that's something completely different. I, hey, they're not trying to let us get out of here, chill. I no, said, no, they're not. Isaiah Garcia, more chill with chill weekly. Hey man, they that's, up, for it, man. that's up to the network, B. That, that's yeah. up to the network. So uh, you know that's that, that's that's that's, that's what we that's doing, though. That's, yeah, that's, that's up to doing. chill. That's up to the guys up top. That's outside of yeah, my pay grade. That's what but, we doing. Uh, but you know, we'll see y'all next week. Appreciate y'all for stopping by. Absolutely. Make sure and uh, y'all y'all don't drink and drive. Don't do take that. care of yourself. Love yourself. Don't do that. Be yeah. easy. Later. Oh, there we go. Yeah, man. That's a 